Welcome to week nine of the 2017 regular season in the Prairie Football Conference season. The last regular season game of the season here in 2017. I'm Kevin Donnan for ICU Video. Good afternoon and happy Thanksgiving football fans. And ICU Video is pleased to bring you the, today's action between the Calgary Colts and the Edmonton Wildcats. The Colts come into this game at two and five and in unfamiliar territory. They're out of the playoffs following a disappointing 27, 2017 campaign, which saw the Colts lose four games in the middle of the season and saw the resignation of their head coach Matt Blocker. Interim head coach Tim Kearse would love nothing more than to avoid a last place finish and leave here today with a victory. As for the Wildcats, the future begins this afternoon at a very windy Clark Park. Head coach Darcy Park believes they can restore the roar in 2018 and they can start that with a victory here today and they might be able to climb out of the basement as well. A lot of optimism here for the Wildcats in spite of a one in six record. Head coach Darcy Park believes they have the tools to take the next step. Let's find out this afternoon here at Clark Park and send things upstairs to our broadcast team of Dave Rozak and Rob Herod. Guys, don't tell the Colts and Cats there's nothing to play for here this afternoon. Well, as uh, Tim Kearse told me a number of times out on the field, there's no such thing as a nothing game. Not in this league or not in any other league for that matter. Absolutely Robert. not. Well, when you've played or coached football for this long as these guys have here, there's always something to play for. Whether it's pride, whether it's the last game of some of these alumni or the uh, graduating players who will become alumni next year, they're going to have something to play for. And as a coach, you never want to go out on a loss. So they're going to want to win. They're going to want to challenge their players. And for uh, Darcy, they're going to want to build for next year. Well, you know, Darcy Park told me uh, on Thursday night when we were talking that uh, the one thing that he has to wonder about is that first game of the season. They lost to these Calgary Colts. It was a last-minute uh, thing that they, they lost the game by, I think it was seven points or eight points. They should have won the game, and he thinks that had they, maybe it would have been a different season for his club. Well, we can always look back, but again, he's going to be looking forward, and I think you're right. He's going to really want a little bit of redemption from that, mm -hmm. and I think the players are going to want that too. The players have not forgotten about that game, although it may have been early in the year. Um, they're going to want to come out and prove that they are a better team now. Now, the Calgary Colts have gone through a huge transition. Uh, they lost their coach, Matt Blocker, about uh, September, middle of September or so. He uh, resigned for personal reasons, and it's still a little bit of a mystery. Now they have brought in a new coach who was their OC, their offensive coordinator, in the, uh, in the season, and that is Tim Kearse. Tim Kearse is uh, uh, an interesting gentleman. He has played in the National Football League, he's played in the Canadian Football League, and he's coached in the CFL. So he's got all kinds of experience. He does, and I'm sure he's excited to kind of continue what he's started in the midway through the season. And you know what? You don't know what the future holds and whether or not it'll be there next year, but the reality is he's going to want to get things going, and he's going to want to do the same thing and start establishing, okay, what is this team going to be about moving forward? And, and how difficult would be would it be for first of all for him to come into a program that uh, was really controlled by Matt Blocker and and to try and and get things going his way well I'm sure he's been a big part of what's gone on in the organization while he's been on staff and so he's probably familiar with it and a lot of times when you have a mid-season change having someone familiar with the program is a real key uh, in, in continuing things and not having to kind of restart so again he's going to probably put his own touch on things and we've seen that many times over the years where the mid-season changes happen um, but he's going to start to slowly make changes keep what's really good and maybe change some things he sees uh, needs to be changed and at the time of the trend the transition to the new coaching staff or the new head coach uh, the Calgary Colts went through a four game losing streak midway through the season so obviously the change in coaching does have to have an effect on the players it does and I think um, from a player's perspective they have an opportunity to kind of show the new head guy what they have and what they have to offer uh, the Calgary Colts program and so I think it's exciting to see those guys have an opportunity to play for them and again this is going to be the lasting impression before he starts to make some changes likely in the offseason if he's the guy who's back next year. Well prior to the game we had the introduction of the graduating players among them Colton Hippie the fifth year quarterback with this uh, Edmonton Wildcats team. Uh, Colton has had kind of a checkered career he hasn't had a great season this year but uh, he's getting the start and he's going to go all the way according to coach Darcy Park and I think that's the way it should be you know it's great for him to have that opportunity again you know the reality is is you know his football career as a player is probably ending here and hopefully he continues in in other capacities and coaching and mentoring young guys but again it's going to be a good night for him or a good afternoon for him to kind of play it out and just uh kind of just leave it on the field and just have a real good uh, day 
It's kind of fun and interesting, too, to uh, uh, notice that uh, Bray Josu is one of the graduating players, and the two of them have really grown up together as far as the, uh, the football careers are concerned, and uh, uh, Bray will be getting his last game uh, as, uh, as a Wildcat as well. Well, and these guys will uh, these guys will grow old, and they'll remember. <laughs> they'll have all those memories of uh, of playing together, and you know what? That relationship never dies. And I think that's one of the really great things about football: is those relationships that you've established over the years on different teams through highs and lows. You maintain those relationships well beyond your playing your playing days, and maybe they'll be coaching together. Maybe they'll be just hanging out having drinks together, watching a game. Let's not forget Bailey Wasdell too. His last season as a Calgary Colt, he's had a great career at a quarterback. There's the opening kickoff. It comes down to about the 30 yard line and ahead to the 40, taken there by number one, Bennett Thompson. And Thompson with a run back of five yards. The Wildcats are saying the ball was fumbled and yeah. they have it, but uh, let's see what the officials say. I think, I think you're right. I think it was fumbled. I don't think he was down. You can maybe check it on the replay if we can get a close close look there. You can see just as he's getting tackled, that ball does come loose. And I don't know if his knees were down or not because it seemed like there was a little bit of a bot, like uh, one of the cat's bodies who was tackling was underneath him. And it is a wild and it catch is. football. That's the kind of break that the Wildcats need to get things going here in what has been uh, a somewhat dismal season. Well, we've, talked, we've talked about special teams and how that can impact the game, and already the Wildcats special teams unit has made a play to uh, put their offense in great field position here early. On the 41-yard line, first and 10 for the Wildcats. Colton Hippie at quarterback. There's a handoff to Bray Josu. He finds some room to the outside, runs into a couple of his blockers, and then finally is tackled after a gain of close to eight yards. So a good start for uh, the Edmonton Wildcats, not only with the break on the fumble, but a, a good run for uh, Bray Josu. Well, great to see uh, the Wildcats early leaning on their a couple of their veterans and also leaning on that run game. And there's nothing better to start by just kind of churning the ball out, wearing the defense down at this early stage. Um, the run game is key to a lot of the things the Wildcats are going to want to do on offense. All right, Colton Hippie gets the start, but in comes Cody Olson for the second play of the football game. Motion goes to the right. There's a handoff to Josu. Josu up to the 30 and still going and finally tackled just over the 30 yard line at about the 28 or so. So enough for the first down and uh, not exactly sure what the, oh, here comes Colton Hippie now back off the bench. <laughs> well, I think what they're going to do is they're going to use their quarterbacks as they have all year in different situations. Again, in a run situation where you need someone a little bit more mobile, then they can make those changes. And so again, Darcy's going to continue to use uh, the strengths of their different quarterbacks. And they're going to go with two setbacks. There goes motion to the right once again and again. It's a handoff to Josu. Josu spins away from one tackle and is uh, taken down just over the 20 yard line at about the 18, but we have a flag and it's going to be a holding call against the uh, Huskies against the Wildcats rather it is and once again those penalties are going to start to uh, play into the the calling for the uh, coordinators here again Calgary doing a good job getting out there again still giving up five yards obviously there's a holding that may have uh, helped them get some of those five yards but now they're going to look at uh, first and long here first and 20 ball is on the 39 yard line Bray Josu, the lone setback, flankers to this side, two of them over on this side, two over on the other side. Now the motion goes to the left, and there's the handoff right up the middle. Josu has some room. He's at the 25 and is taken down over the 25 at about the uh, 23, 24 yard line. He's going to be short of the first down. It'll be second and about uh, five yards. So a good run for Bray Josu as they establish that run game early. Yeah, they're continuing to go with the run. They obviously have seen something that they feel like they can have success and they've had success early. So with uh, second and very manageable distance, it really brings all the play selection. They can run the ball, they can use play action. They have a number of choices here now with a very second and manageable uh, distance. Colton Hippie still in at quarterback. Back in the pocket now, looking downfield, the pass is complete over the 20-yard line, and it is taken there by number 13, Kieran Bell, out of McNally High School, and he will have enough for the first down. Well, and right back to the play action, they go after a number of run plays. They go to the play action, and they get a guy out into the flats on a little bit of a mismatch. Looks like um, he got a nice little flat route, or we call it a two route, where he's just going to get past the sticks, and the receiver did a good job getting past the sticks. So it'll be first down for the Wildcats. Ball on about the 17-yard line. 
There's the, hand, the, the play action, the pass into the end zone and over the head of the intended receiver, Ronnie oh, Oling, uh, out on Harry goal. Ainley. And uh, Oling has suddenly become a very important cog in this in this offense. Uh, last week against uh, on the road, he scored uh, or had uh, uh, seven re receptions. So a big game for him last week, and he's looking for more of the same this time. Well, you can see him r run the corner route or a flag route there. And again, he couldn't locate the ball. Otherwise, it could have been a touchdown because it was a well-thrown ball kind of right to the spot where he wanted it. And he was in behind the coverage, too. He was in. He had a step and a half on him, and he was ready for a completion. Couldn't locate the ball. Second and 10, ball on the 17. There's the handoff to Josu. Josu has it, some room as he's at the 10 and is taken down just shy of the five yard line. And uh, he needed to get to about the seven, so it looks like he's gonna have enough for the first down. And right back to the run game they go again, if you're having success, and again, you <laughs> lean on those uh, final year players that are really playing with a lot of passion. And it's something that as a coach, you gotta understand those guys are gonna have that passion early on. And so if you can build that momentum and hold on to that momentum, those guys will carry. And even the young guys, they're gonna play for those veterans. And as you know, the uh, um, the, the run game has been a real bugaboo all season long for them, but they've got it going here. And again, it's Josu. Josu tries the right side this time and is taken down after a gain of about two or three. And, look, and looking a little bit at the Calgary defense, in a couple situations they've had three down linemen and then they've had four linebackers. And they've also uh, changed that front to have four down linemen and three linebackers. If they're going to continue to run the ball like this, they're going to have to bring some bodies in there to take out some of those holes. And so, uh, so the Wildcats can't just expose them on the interior. And now Cody Olson comes back in at quarterback. Olson, of course, a little bit more mobile than, than Colton Hippie. Likes to run the ball. Rolling to his outside, the pass into the end zone, it is incomplete. Uh, actually, a couple of receivers uh, in the area, including uh, out there number 69, uh, Mike Ray, who was playing as a, as a tight end. Yeah, and again, a big body, not quite the speed to get to the edge, and they just missed him by a little bit. It wasn't a lot, but he did have him open. And again, we talk about what the run game does for an offense, and there you saw it right there. They allowed the play action. Unfortunately, they couldn't quite connect. We'll see what they can do here on third down. Third and three. Rolling left, handoff, Josu, touchdown! Ray Josu. Well, again, a great little stretch play. Give your mobile running back a little bit of space off the edge, and he's going to find the hole, and that he did. He was very patient, and once he saw the seam, he knew he could get to the goal line, and he got all the way there for the score. Great job by the offensive line, opening up a big hole for Bray Joseph. Yeah, and any run game that has success always leans on those offensive linemen, and they have been moving the defensive linemen around and getting up to the second level in linebackers, which is allowed for some of those big runs. Here comes the point after. Tanner Holt gets it up and through the uprights, and so with 9.51 to go in the first quarter, the Edmonton Wildcats coming up with a 7-0 lead, and on their first series of downs, too, thanks to a, a recovered fumble on the, on the kickoff. Yeah, started with great field position, but again, something that we haven't seen enough of from the Wildcats this year is actually taking advantage of that. Now, looking at the other side of the ball, the Colts, they're gonna really have to come out. They've kind of, they knew there was gonna be an emotional game. You've got, you know, your, your graduating players out on the field with their parents. There's gonna be that emotion playing at home, still both teams playing for a lot. They've kind of weathered that storm. Now it's gonna be, okay, let's keep possession of the ball. Let's let our offense now respond to that and see if they can get a little bit of momentum back and don't let the Wildcats take too, too much advantage of that first turnover. And not to mention a very vociferous crowd today in, in uh, considering the weather that, uh, that is outside with the uh, wind blowing out of the northwest at about 40 clicks, uh, gusts to, uh, they were supposedly up to about 70. And a good crowd to watch this one. There's that short kick again, and it'll bounce forward. And it, uh, out there taking it is Bennett Thompson. He dives on it just in time. And there's an issue that we, we should talk about, too, as far as the wind is concerned. Uh, when you're kicking into the wind, the receivers, actually, the ball gets up and then it almost comes straight down, so it's tough for them to, uh, to get up under it. Yeah, someone's really got to make a decision, call the ball, and then zone in on it. Again, that's two in a row that it's come a little bit shorter. Again, they're kicking into the wind. So, again, if you can hang it up and get your guys down, they almost got another break there. We saw it happen a couple of times last night in that game between the Huskies and the uh, Saskatoon Hilltops as well. Back in the pocket, Bailey Wazdell 
They grab him by the shirt and take him down for a huge loss. And in there to make the tackle, the big guy, number 98, Evan Cochisarli, who missed last week's game and is in there tonight or this afternoon and uh, showing his presence. Yeah, and you know, they go right out of the right to play action out of the gate, looking downfield. And the secondary did a good job of closing down all the windows, and that forced him to hold onto the ball longer, and the defensive line eventually got to him. All right, second and long, back in the pocket now. Wazdal being chased out of the pocket, gets the ball away. It is incomplete and intended. Uh, just out on the flats to Josh, uh, or make that uh, uh, Fraser, Omari, Omari Fraser. At number 57, and Ryan it'll be uh, two and out the for the Calgary Colts. Yeah, and once again, you see the offensive line of Calgary is actually doing a pretty good job getting him some time. But you've got to get receivers open, and he's got to be able to find them downfield. And so again, tough situation to be in for Calgary. Now they're punting after giving up already one turnover and a score. Uh, their defense is going to have to come up big when the Wildcats offense gets on the field. A good hurry for uh, Ronnie Bakahe. And we have, Wildcats looks like timeout a, a timeout the, by the Wildcats. They may not have had enough players on the field. Yeah, and again, you know, probably a good decision by Coach Park to, to call that timeout, just make sure everything's settled down. You don't want to be rushing things. You don't want to hand the momentum back. The Wildcats have got the momentum off that first turnover and a great little short drive to score a touchdown. Now you want to make sure you keep that momentum. So there's no need to panic. There's no need to rush. Uh, just settle things down, keep them going, because right now they're in a position they want to be, and Calgary is still kind of fighting themselves almost on both those, uh, both the, the returns for the special teams as well as their offense. It's still struggling a little bit, so Darcy wants to keep it that way, and Calgary really wants to turn that around so they can start moving the ball, having some success, and then build on that. Number 96, uh, Jamie Turcott uh, came off the field uh, limping just a little bit, but it looks like he's going to be okay. Uh, the Cold Lake Composite grad in his fourth year with the uh, with the Huskies. Standing on the sidelines now, should be in good shape to continue. And so we'll try that punt. Kicking with the wind. Couple of receivers standing all the way back at the 35 yard line. It's a high end over end kick. It'll bounce down at the midfield stripe right into the waiting arms of number 22, Isaiah Brown. and. Brown is going to go nowhere. In fact, may have lost a couple of yards. They'll scrimmage it at about the 40-yard line. Well, great discipline. You can see here as this kick gets off. Again, there's a stepped a little bit to the side, got it off. But good job of Calgary of getting downfield and containing him. He tried to get to the edge here again, but he realized, nope, there are too, there's too many white jerseys over there, so he had to cut back. And So great job by the cover team. And for Calgary, that's step one of trying to get a little momentum. Again, at least the cuts are starting in their own end. On the 40-yard line with 8.30 to go in the first quarter, Bray Josu once again takes the handoff, tries the middle, and will pick up about three yards on the play. He is running with a lot of purpose and a lot of determination out there. Well, he's got a lot to run for today, and so, you know, we've seen that, and again, we see the coach using that as well, um, leaning on some of those veteran guys here in the last game of the season. Colton Hippie. Back in at quarterback. Bray Josu is the lone setback. Three flankers to the far side. And again, Josu will take the ball, runs into one of his own blockers, and uh, is stopped after a gain of about a yard. So it'll be a two and out for the, uh, um, for the Edmonton Wildcats. But, uh, you know, maybe just going to the well once too often. Yeah, and again, you are going to want to mix it up. And again, if Calgary's... <laughs> Excuse me. If Calgary is going to give up so many yards on the ground, they're going to start to make their adjustments. And so, again, you've got to continually make adjustments and see what the defense is doing and then rely on your quarterbacks to make the right reads. All right. The Wildcats are going to put a couple of uh, players on side for this kick into the wind. And we've seen that work successfully a couple of times uh, for the Wildcats over the season. Matt Zeroni is the uh, kicker. And it looks like we're going to have another timeout, this time called by the Colts. Yeah, the Colts had 13 guys on the field. So again, instead of giving up uh, a penalty there, they decided to use one of their timeouts. And again, you saw from the initial lineup of the Wildcats, they've got two guys on side, as you mentioned. And again, the idea of that is to make sure if that ball hangs up in the air and is short, you've now got some a couple of guys that can go down and uh and snag that we saw that in a couple of the cfl games actually uh just uh just la just yesterday i think hamilton did that again kicking into the wind uh making a quick kick knowing it's short and then send your speed guys down there so 
we've seen lots of exciting things from the Wildcats special teams unit this year, and um, I'm sure we'll see some more today. They do have one of the most exciting uh, special teams units uh, in the in the Prairie Football Conference. There's no question. They they like to try different kinds of things, and and uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Well, you keep teams honest, right? When you know you've got some different plays, you're going to keep them honest. All right, Matt Zeroni, punting into a wind that is gusting up to about 50 clicks or so. It's coming out of the northwest now. There's a high snap, and Zeroni will take off with it. Nope, decides to kick it after all. And a low bouncing ball down to about the 45-yard line, and it is picked up there, and they'll... No run back on that play, but there is a flag on the far side. Yeah, the flag could be new, no yards, but again, they had, I think, two guys onside, and it looked like one of those guys was the guy who was in that five-yard kind of halo mm -hmm. they talk about. So I'm guessing the flag will likely be picked up, uh, knowing we had two guys onside back there once the ref discussed that. And that is exactly the call from uh, the head referee, Larry LeDuc, number 99 out there. Don't see men, many number 99s in Edmonton, do you? Not many. <laughs> <laughs> For some strange reason. There's a handoff, left side. Taken. Billy Wazell handing off to number 30, Omari Fraser. Number 30, Omari Fraser with the ball. Gain of two yards. Brought down on the play by number 98, Evan. Short, Short gain, Charlie. two yards. They mark it down at about the 45 yard line. It'll be second. They call it second and seven. Short drop, pass complete at the 45 yard line, but a great job of picking that one up by number 21. Who else but Jaden Dalkey? Well, again, you know, the Cats have the momentum. Their defense is playing with some confidence based on some success on special teams and some sex success on um, offense as well, putting the first major into the end zone. Again, great aggressive play coming downhill, seeing the screen and reading that. A lot of times that comes down to some film work. Okay, we know they run that wide receiver screen, so let's just make sure we know how we're playing that because the slot back did get out and block the corner, but then Dalkey came in from the inside and made a sure tackle. For Jaden Dalkey, that is his 57th tackle of the season and that is among the leaders in the uh, prairie football conference you know but you know uh, very similar to the huskies uh, defensive secondary these guys love to tackle they love they, to hit they do and they're going to come downhill we've talked about it before they are going to be aggressive they are going to be coming up to the line of scrimmage and so calgary is going to have to see that recognize that and look to take advantage of that and maybe get over the top and we've seen that kind of counter punch right here they go send out the wide and again quick coming downhill and he was there. And I always talk to uh, my players when I'm coaching that. If you're gonna, if you're gonna see that tackle need to be made at the line of scrimmage, you need to react quickly so he doesn't have a chance. Because again, the Calgary Calgary offense has some athletes, have some playmakers. If you give them space, they're gonna make guys miss. And so you need to make sure you make. If you can't knock the ball down, make the tackle as soon as the reception happens to re to reduce the gain. Um, to as little as possible. Well, there is real bad news for the Calgary Colts. Their number one quarterback, Bailey Wazdal, is being uh, helped off the field. You could see he was hit from the side and uh, it looked like his right knee buckled at the time. I don't know whether we can get another replay of that, but uh, it was a pretty hard hit and it was from one of his own players rolling back into him. And so we'll have a change in quarterback uh, when the Calgary offense comes back on. Right now, they're punting it away. It's a high end-over-end -end kick. It's going to be short down to about the 40-yard line. Bounces over the uh, head of uh, number 22, Isaiah Brown. And Brown is uh, tackled almost immediately all the way back at the 25-yard line. Well, Calgary got a favorable bounce. Again, the wind's kind of gusting, blowing in different directions. And that wasn't a clean putt, but they did a good a good job of covering it again. And Isaiah Brown did a great job of adjusting to what would typically be an awkward bounce and securing the ball. Again, the Wildcats at this point don't need to make any mistakes, don't want to make any quote unquote unforced errors here in the game. Right now they have the momentum and they can keep that. Ball on the 28, first and 10 for the Wildcats. Colton Hippie handing it off this time. It will be to number 29, uh, Brayden Chilibeck and the Vermilion rookie Plows ahead for a gain of close to 
eight yards. It'll be second and two. Right now, let's go downstairs and a very cold and <laughs> shivering. <laughs> it's Kevin not so Dunn. bad, but you know, Rob mentioned about the wind down here. It is definitely a very swirling wind. The sun is trying to come out, but the it's really gusting down here and literally from the north, from the south, literally moment by moment, guys. Thank you very much, Kevin. There's the handoff once again, and it is uh, Braden Chillebeck. He needed to get a couple yards. We'll see where they mark it. It's going to be awfully close to that first down marker. He's short by Braden about Chilibet, a yard. The ball carrier for the Wildcats. So the punting team will be coming on. Be a yard short of a first down. Third and one now at the 30. Guys, Kevin from the sideline, the defensive group of the Wildcats getting together here. I think one thing that you may see with a new quarterback in for the Colts, you may see the Wildcats blitz a little more and try and get some heat on the quarterback. And that's certainly what the defensive group was discussing here just a moment ago. But as for the wind, it's going to swirl and it could get in the gusts even up to 70 kilometers an hour this afternoon. We sure hope not anyway. Guys, back to you. All right, the punt into the wind from Matt Zeroni. He'll get it away. It's going to be a low bouncing ball and a bounce in favor of the Wildcats all the way down past the 40-yard line. And coming in to make the tackle was number 54, uh, Zach Chumchuk. And uh, Chumchuk seeing some action on those special teams and did a great job of uh, getting in behind that uh, receiver and taking him down. Yeah, two great special teams guys. Chase LaRose also downfield helping out on that tackle. And again, that's what you want from those guys on special teams. Get downfield and secure tackle and really eliminate any kind of return, putting their defense in the best field position possible. Down on the 35-yard line, first down for the Calgary Colts. And in there at quarterback now is number 11, Dylan Pye. Seeing his first action of the season, there's the handoff, and it'll be taken by number 22, Landon Rose. And Rose, who uh, didn't see a whole lot of action this season either, picks up a, a gain of close to about five or six yards. They say seven, so it'll be second and about three. So a couple changes now for Calgary. They've got a new quarterback who probably didn't get as many repetitions as he would like if he knew he was starting. And so the game plan for Calgary may look a little different now with a new quarterback in there. Dylan Pye at quarterback and timeout Calgary. Another timeout called by the Calgary Colts. So again, in talking about early in a game when you lose your starting quarterback and hopefully we see him again before the day's out, but if you lose your starting quarterback, often that will re re reduce the size of your playbook, meaning you won't be able to call all the plays that you maybe initially thought you prepare for this game. And so again, the backup quarterback, again, he probably prepares really well, is always preparing to plan to be in. Mm -hmm. But again, he's not gonna have taken the repetitions in practice all week to prepare himself as well as he could. So we'll watch and see how he handles that type of pressure. Let's go downstairs again, here's Kevin. Bit of an injury update, Dave, and I'm not on the Calgary sideline, I'm on the Wildcats sideline, but uh, one of the officials just called for Dr. Adams of the Wildcats to make his way over to the Colts sideline. We assume that that is for Wazdal, the quarterback, but uh, as we always say, as long as Dr. Adams is involved, that player is in the best, in best care possible. So we'll uh, head over to the Calgary sideline and try and get an update on on uh, the injury over there on the on the far sideline guys thank you very much kevin we expect you to jog of course just to keep warm and he's on his way over there so we'll find out exactly what the situation is uh, for you folks uh, watching this game down in calgary bailey wasdell banged into and injured his knee on the last series of plays there's the handoff kind of uh, a, a bit of a reverse but uh, a short gain of only a couple of yards the ball taken by tanaka mutano yeah, and so what you're seeing there, and you see a little toss action, so anticipating getting to the outside, and then you have one of kind of the guys lined up in the tight end position really coming back underneath and behind the line, and they gained the first down there. A little bit of misdirection. Now back in the pocket, looking downfield, the pass incomplete. It was intended out there for number 19, Jesse Kuntz, but he was being well covered by Matt Zeroni. Yeah, ball was thrown a little bit high again. First pass for the young quarterback in the game. Uh, again, defense playing pretty tight to the line of scrimmage. I think Calgary's really need to gonna stretch this field a little bit and uh, make those DBs back off just a little bit, knowing they will go over the top if they need to. 3.44 to go in the first quarter. 7-0 in favor of the Wildcats over the Calgary Colts. There's a flag and a freebie ball for the uh, Colts, well over the head of the intended receiver 
and and there's the issue and we've talked about that before with the wind I mean it, it can be your friend or your enemy whether you're going against it or with it yeah I've definitely played in coasting games that have you with the wind behind you isn't always necessarily the best thing either and again punting or kicking into the wind can cause us challenges as well and so uh, the young quarterback's going to have to learn to manage the situation he's been given and now he's got an opportunity to play offside the call against the Colts it'll be second and 15 as we mentioned Dylan Pye at quarterback there's the snap he fumbles it and is thrown for a loss in there to make the tackle once again the big guy Evan coaches Sarley well and Johnny on the spot right quarterback sitting there trying to pick up a football great job by the defense of being aggressive and getting the rush on him again the pressure he's feeling up front is starting to build up, right? You, you've, you know the defense alignment are coming, your eyes are going to different spots, and it looked like his eyes were distracted by the guy coming across. Didn't quite secure the ball in the snap. Jaden Sheelan doing the punting for the Colts. Gets a good one away, a high spiraling down to about the 45-yard line. It'll be taken by Isaiah Brown, and Brown chooses the direct route and is stopped after a run back of about five yards. Once again, great special teams coverage by the Calgary Colts punting unit here. They're getting downfield, beautiful kick again with the wind. Um, you know, he hung it up in the air, gave his cover guys time to get downfield, and so they were there ready to secure the tackle. They mark it at the 50. First down for the Edmonton Wildcats. Colton Hippie at quarterback, second man through. And it is taken there by number 29, Braden Chilibeck. And he has stopped after a gain of maybe a half a yard or so, but not much more than that. You know, the uh, right side of the defensive line there did a great job of kind of just stalemating and filling the holes. And you can see a linebacker step up into the gap. And uh, you see a couple D linemen getting double teamed and not giving up ground, which helped uh, the Calgary Colts defense stop the running back early. Three receivers on the far side looking that way. There's the pass incomplete and intended for number 13, Kieran Bell. Kind of looked like the Chris ball Corner. slipped out of the hands of uh, Colton Hippie when he, when he threw it. Well, it's not more than a couple of degrees above zero, and that football is going to get cold and usually is pretty hard at this point in time. And so they're going to have to you know, call plays that they're able to execute even giving, given the cold weather conditions and the, with the condition of the football right now. Definitely didn't get a good, uh, a good grip on the football. So Matt Zeroni will be kicking this one away. He likes to try and fake it and, and draw a couple of uh, Calgary players in, but uh, hasn't the last three attempts. And we're going to have a penalty way down here, back where the kicker was, but uh, we'll see who it goes against and maybe roughing the kicker. Well, we also had a penalty flag right at the point, and again, it could be no yards, but I know the guy in on the tackle was the punter, and so that, of course, is legal. So we'll see what these two penalty flags bring. Now, there was certainly no roughing the kicker. Nobody near Zeroni. So we'll wait for the call from the officials. They are consulting at around the 40 yard line. I'm not sure about that flag that was thrown back in the back in the Huskies or the Wildcats backfield. Offsetting penalties. So the head official, Larry Leduc, uh, will be talking with uh, the Wildcats number 21, Jaden Dalkey, the captain on that defense. And the captain on offense is number 58, Tyler Winchester. So let's hear what the call is. No yards, kicky team number 54. We have holding 46 of the Calgary Colts. Five yard difference, first down. And there you have it. So five yards in favor of the Wildcats there because that ball was bouncing on the ground. It's only would have been a five yard, no yards call. So that helped out the Wildcats. They place the ball down at the 30 yard line and the Colts take it over from there. There's the handoff right up the middle and it is taken by uh, Omari Fraser once again. Again, the Colts really trying to manage the offense at this point. They're not really being aggressive. And again, with the young quarterback, you've kind of got to do that. So they may rely on their offensive line and their backs to do a little bit more running than maybe they were hoping to, just to try to settle the young quarterback down so he can go the distance today. 
Dylan Pye actually the third string quarterback. Their second string quarterback was injured earlier in the season. And now he's being chased. Pye gets around the corner and is taken out of bounds and will likely lose about uh, two or three yards on the play. Let's go downstairs once again, and here is Kevin. Thanks a lot, Dave. From the Colt sideline, took a walk over that way, and it would appear Bailey Wasnall's day is over. He is dealing with a very serious lower leg injury to his to his right leg. Looks like it could be an ankle, or maybe even they were even looking closely at the shins. So. Uh, sounds like Wazda will have a trip in the x-ray room at some point, but dealing with a very serious lower leg injury, and it looks like his day could be over. Guys? Not the way you like to see a season end, especially for a veteran like uh, Bailey Wazda. Off the punt, Isaiah Brown finds some room on the outside, and that's something that uh, he's been trying to do all game, and he picks up a run back of about uh, 15, 16 yards or so and uh, good field position for the Wildcats. Yeah, and again, you can see on the re replay here, a pretty decent punt, but he didn't have the hang time, a little bit of a bounce, which again, using that speed, getting to the outside edge, and I think uh, the edge blocker of the Wildcats may have got away with a little bit of a holding there. Um, but nonetheless, if you're not living really, really close to the line, you're not playing football, so. <laughs> Lucas Westner is doing a good job on the blocking. Hand off. This side, Chilovec. Chilovec is stopped at the line of scrimmage, keeps his legs moving, but uh, still will be thrown for a loss of maybe a yard or so. And he is slow to get up. Still down on his knees. And you can see on that last play, it's kind of that read zone. So you can see he's going to put the ball in and have the choice to pull it. At some point in time, he's going to want to pull it. And again, not that, I mean, 48 coming off the edge is kind of looking at both, and he's going to be making those decisions. But because of the success of the run game, he's going to slowly be drawn further down and further down to try to stop that run game. If we're going to get a quarterback to the edge. He's going to have a lot of space out there. It looks like they're taking a look at either his ankle or his shin. It looks like uh, the right ankle. Uh, may have may have rolled over on it you know, when he was tackled. Yeah, and again, on these cold weather days, you mean you get shin on shin or you get someone's cleat on your shin or on your ankle, it can hurt, and hopefully uh, he's able to continue to play today. We're down to the final 15 seconds of this uh, first quarter. 7 nothing in favor of the Edmonton Wildcats over the Calgary Colts. And uh, it's been an injury-filled game so far. Yeah, and we're only a quarter in. Uh, there he goes. Limping off. Looks like he'll be back, though. Chilibeck was injured at the beginning of the season in that game against the Calgary Colts and missed uh, about uh, half the season and uh, just came back about three weeks ago. You hate to see him get injured again. Colton Hippie still at quarterback. Three receivers to the far side. Motion goes to the right. Into the middle. There is the pass. Almost picked off by the Calgary Colts, number, number 45, 45, Austin Daisy. Daisy. Daisy with a couple of interceptions already this season, and, and uh, he came awfully down close down to down picking down. that one off. And again, that's exactly what you want your linebackers to do. You want them to drop into space once they've, re once they've read pass, and you can see here, they're getting back into space, see the ball delivered and laying out to knock that ball out. Otherwise, it could have been a, a really great gain for the Wildcats because there was space in behind him. So again, Matt Zeroni called upon to uh, punt this one away. Almost decides to take it up the middle. He actually, he had a bit of a seam to go to, but the uh, ball bounces along again for the uh, Wildcats in their favor, all the way down to number nine, Jordy Kabamba. And uh, we have another flag, so it'll likely be a no yards. Officials are conferring. So there may be some question as to the onside player again yeah it could have been an onside piece and again <laughs> the trick is is when you're punting and you have onside players and the, and we've seen it a couple of times how close are the other guys because if the other guys are really close even though that's the main guy coming in making the hit you got to look at those other guys and if they're within that five yard halo it's still going to be no yards no yards kicking team number 26 holding receiving team number 44 five yard difference so identical to what happened in the last <laughs> two yeah, Once again, we're getting in the favor of the Wildcats. And again, the Colts really, really want to clean those little pieces up and give them a little bit better field position, give their young quarterback a little bit better position to start the offense out. Ball on the 18-yard line. 
First down for the Calgary Colts. Dylan Pye at quarterback. Little misdirection again, and the handoff to the right side taken by number 22, Landon Rose. And Rose knifes ahead for a gain of about eight yards or so. And it'll be second and two. And it's interesting to watch the difference in the running games between the Colts and the Wildcats. The Wildcats are just lining up back there, coming straight downhill, relying on the offensive line to make some holes and push guys around. Colts, on the other hand, are a lot of misdirection going to the edges. All right, let's go downstairs again. Here is Kevin Dunham. Well, thanks so much, Dave. And, of course, ICU Video wants to wish all of our viewers a very happy Thanksgiving here on this Turkey Day long weekend here in Edmonton. And, of course, we want to want you to stay with ICU Video next weekend coming up. The Edmonton Huskies host the Regina Thunder in the PFC semifinal Sunday afternoon, next Sunday afternoon, October 15th. That'll be likely a one o'clock start make sure you check with the huskies and the pfc for further information on the kickoff time but make sure you stay right here with icu video and icu video would also like to thank the board members players coaches and staff members of the huskies and wildcats for their continued support and access throughout the 2017 regular season but of course there's playoff action next weekend so stay right here with icu video next weekend as the pfc gets into the stretch run and the final four as we we head towards the Canadian Bowl. Guys, back to you. And let me just emphasize the access part of it. I've, I've had great access to uh, uh, to both these teams, uh, the coaching staff and the players uh, during the week at practice and that kind of thing. And it, it's just great the cooperation that uh, ICU video has been given uh, by these two teams. All right, and of course uh, the Sponsors of the Edmonton Wildcats, uh, Dental Choice, uh, dentalchoice.ca, McElhaney, uh, JC Boiler Service, The Rough Rider, Lamb and Fitness, QTR, Kitchen and Drink Limited, and of course the folks from WestJet. Flying high as always. So we're getting ready to start the second quarter of football here with the Wildcats leading by a score of seven to nothing over the Calgary Colts. The Colts with a second and two. Ball down at about the 26 yard line. And we also get that sun out. That's gonna feel nice for the players who are out on the field feeling the warmth of the sun on their skin. <laughs> Dylan Pye at quarterback. There's the sweep to this side. Ball taken by number 19, Jesse Kuntz. Kuntz gets some room and is taken down, but not before he picks up about five yards and enough for the first down. And I think if you watch uh, on the replay here, we're gonna have a holding call on Calgary. The edge blocker, uh, you can see here as he gets out to the edge, I can't see the number there. One of the DBs, you can see he's got a grass front and back of the jersey and just held on a little bit too long, didn't get away with it. It's gonna put him in a second and long. And that'll bring up a second and 12. So it'll be all the way back to about the 16-yard line, second and 12 for the Calgary Colts. Colts send out three receivers to this side. Likely a passing play back in the pocket. Pye looks to the right side, wide open near the sidelines. The ball taken by Dallas Burke. And Burke with his 15th reception of the season. And he'll pick up a gain of close to about uh, eight yards or so. It'll be once again third and about three. Well, I'm not sure that play was actually designed as a wide receiver screen. If you saw the guy who typically does the blocking, which was the wideout in that replay, he kind of stuttered his feet and went by. So I think what they're trying to do is trying to give him the illusion they were running the wide receiver screen and then try to slip that by. What happened was is both DBs ran with the guy going deep, and that's why he ended up... Um, passing it to the guy underneath. All right, kick into the wind. It's going to be a short one. Comes down to about the four-yard line, and it is taken and carried across the 40 to about the 37-yard line. Good job again by Isaiah Brown uh, jumping on that ball quickly, and there will also be an additional five yards tacked on. Well, yeah, and you can see the impact of the wind on the punt game, and, you know, that kind of explains some of the things we've been seeing from the Wildcats. They've la allowed the punter to run a little bit, gain some yards, maybe kick it lower and have your cover team downfield. Exactly. Calgary lined up and just tried to punt it into the wind, really only gaining a few yards, and the Cats are in a great field position here once again. Ball is on the 34-yard line. First and 10. Motion goes to the right. Handoff. Josu has some room in the middle. He's at the 20 and is taken down there on a good tackle from behind by Kendrick Ankama. 
Well, once again, leaning on the run game of the Cats, they're having success, and you got to keep using that, and you'll see play action off of that. But again, you want to establish that. And you know, it's great to be able to run the ball for any offense. Those offensive linemen spend a lot of time in pass protection when they can just kind of come downhill, push bodies around. That's really fun for the offensive line, and that really carries the team. All right, Josu again, the lone setback. Two receivers to this side, two to the other side. There's the handoff, bit of a mix-up between uh, Hippie and uh, Josu. And as a result, there's gonna be about a three or four yard loss on the play. Well, in Calgary's number 95, you can see quickly into the backfield untouched. So there must've been a mix-up on the offensive line because you would never leave a guy like that totally untouched into the backfield. And what a great athletic play by him to wrap up a very quick and mobile running back. Second and 13. Ball on the 25-yard line. Now this time a couple of uh, setbacks. Out there is number 13, uh, Kieran Bell. There's the pass into the end zone and over the head of the intended receiver, Ronnie Oling. And Oling actually being double coverage, right covered and in, in behind the coverage. Yeah, I think if uh, you see Colton, the, the ball hits the turf on the snap, and so a little bit of a mix up there, but he did have time to get it up, and I think his initial dump was going to be to the running back, but Calgary did a great job of getting out into the flat and covering that, and so he kind of just took his shot downfield, giving his receiver a chance to try to make a play in the end zone. It's third and 13, and take a look. They're going for it. I think they've got their field goal oh, unit no. back out onto the field now. Yep, and out there is number seven, Tanner Holt. Didn't see him sneak onto the field. Here's the snap, the ball is down. It is up, and it is wide of the uh, goal posts, but it'll go for a single point. And again, in an opportunity where you can try to get some points, obviously they wanted to get three out of that, but again, kicking the other direction on this field today probably would have been a different choice. They probably wouldn't have kicked it because that wind is pretty strong up there uh, in the field. And we've seen that impact the punts. And so again, in a position to get three points, unfortunately for the Wildcats, they are coming away with one. Again, considering the field position they started and that's a win for the Calgary defense. And they'll mark the ball at the 35 yard line. The Calgary offense is on the field, led by first year quarterback, Dylan Pye. Pai in, in replace, in place of uh, the injured Bailey Wazdell. There's the handoff, goes right side. Short gain, maybe a couple yards on the play. The ball taken by number 17, Dallas Burke. Well, again, Calgary working to get some comfort for their quarterback, get a little bit of, uh, you know, get, get those nerves calmed down so he can go out and execute the offense, as they call it. Hurry offense, hurry up offense. There's the snap. The ball is, comes loose, but it's picked up by Pye, and he throws it downfield, but well short of the intended receiver. And that ball was held up in the wind as it was uh, intended out there on the far side. Well, Pye feeling the pressure of, again, the defensive lineman. He actually may have had a little bit more time than he thought there. He had the pick of the ball once again off the turf, which shortens everything, and he just put his whole arm into this to try to get it down there. As he's getting hit, again, receiver again, couldn't locate the ball, obviously not thrown where he thought it was gonna be thrown, and it fell to the turf. All right, Sheelan kicking into the wind for the first time, and he gets another low end over end kick. It'll come down over the center field stripe taken there by Isaiah Brown, and Brown is pushed back, and he'll have a negative run back on that one, but the uh, Wildcats Isaiah will have good Brown. field position once again. Yeah, the Cats have really had good field position this entire game so far, only being able to take advantage of it once off that opening drive. We'll see if they can get some of that momentum back and to uh, get down into scoring position. And again, the Calgary defense, considering where what they've been defending and how much ground they've been defending, they've done a pretty good job to only be down 8 nothing at this point in time. With 11.15 to go in the first half. Colton Hippie at quarterback, motion goes left. There's the handoff, or the play action rather, and the pass complete on the far side, taken by number 15, Oling, Ronnie Oling. 15, and uh, Oling getting into the mix Oling on offense, doing a good job with a pickup of close to six yards on the play. It'll be second and four. Well, and Colton Hippie's doing a good job of just taking what the defense is giving him. In that case, the Calgary Colts were playing kind of what we could call a cut-hang defense. So it's a cover-three defense where on the short side of the field, you have one guy going deep, and on the wide side, you have a different guy going deep, still covering the three-thirds uh, in the back end of the defensive field. 
Motion goes right, looking that way. Hippie pumps once, now takes off with it, and is hit by a pair of uh, Calgary tacklers out there along with, uh, was number 95, uh, Denny Chekic. Well, once again, you can see on the replay, he's got lots of time. He's got to make a few decisions. Then finally he takes off and goes. Unfortunately for him, I think it was the two Calgary guys who made the big collision between themselves, and it wasn't uh, taking a toll on Colton in there. Kind of fell awkwardly, but he's, he's going to be okay, no problem. So the Wildcats will kick this one away with the wind. A couple of receivers sitting all the way down on the 15-yard line. High snap and a high end-over-end -end kick comes down at the 15. Taken there by number nine, Jordy Kabamba. And Kabamba, a good shoestring tackle. Not sure exactly who made that, but it was a nice tackle. I think, I think it was number 88, Zach Burgess. He made a great job of pulling him down, limiting the game. We also have a flag on the play. We'll see how that impacts the placement of the ball. All the way back here at around the 50-yard line. So we'll see what the call is from the officials. Again, conferring, and Jaden Dalkey is in there, the captain from the Wildcats. Holding, offense, receiving team. Shall be played on point of possession. First down. So holding will be the call. And that will mark the ball down all the way to about the seven yard line. So you can see again, you mean, there hasn't been a lot of offense in this quarter, but the ball is slowly moving towards the Calgary end. Wind playing a big part, mostly right now in the punting game. Quarterbacks have seemed to be able to throw the ball, but again, that punting game is really being impacted by the wind today. Three receivers flanked to this side, back in the pocket. Now the swing pass over the head of the intended receiver. It could be a live ball. And now the officials wave it down. It was awfully close to being a lateral. Well, and you always teach your defense on plays like that, that go to the ball regardless of what everybody else is doing. You can see here, it looks like the ball was thrown ahead about a yard and a half or two. So again, good call by the officials. But again, you want to teach your defense, get on any loose ball in case it is still alive. Second and 10, ball on the eight yard line. From the pocket and being hurried out of the pocket is Dylan Pye and his pass. Uh, just a little bit high, the receiver had to go up for it, and uh, it was intended for Omari Fraser but once again. Brady Curve so, uh, in that Dylan time. Pye, obviously, you know, I mean, he's a, he's a rookie. It's his first year with the team, and in there in a very, very uh, uh, yeah, stressful situation, really. obviously having a tough time getting, uh, getting the ball off to his receivers. They are, and I think the defensive linemen of the Wildcats are winning the battle right now against the offensive line of Calgary, and that is not great for a young quarterback. You can see on that last play, uh, the, re re the, the replay on that last one, you can see he never set his feet in the pocket. He ended up catching the ball and really starting to take off right away. Jaden Sheelan electing to take the knee. And with 9.34 to go in the first half, it's now a 10-0 football game in favor of the, uh, the Wildcats and they will again get some good field position. Yeah, and the, and the coaches from the Colts obviously feeling that pressure of the wind, slowly getting backed up. Instead of trying to punt that away and really giving them a 30, maybe 20 yard field, um, they're gonna elect to give up the two points and see if they can uh, defend a little bit of a longer field and gain some of that field position back, uh, obviously at the expense of two points. They elect to take the ball on the 35 yard line. Colton Hippie in his final game as an Edmonton Wildcat at quarterback. Fumbles the snap and wisely just drops on it and will take the loss of about a yard or so. And again, let's go downstairs. Here is Kevin. Thanks a lot, Dave. And for our Colts viewers, we want to update the situation on the Calgary sideline. Uh, number four, Bailey Wasdall is out of this football game. Uh, some emotion over on the Calgary sideline as a lot of the players came over to Wasdall. Of course, this is his last regular season game as a five-year graduating player. So it's tough to see a career end and a season end uh, with an injury like that, guys. No question about that. And uh, of course, Wasdall has been a a great asset to this uh, Calgary Colts football team over the past five years, uh, especially in last season, uh, leading the uh, uh, the club all the way to uh, the PFC final against uh, the Saskatoon Hilltops. Yeah, and our thoughts and prayers go out to him on this Thanksgiving weekend. It's a tough way to go, and of course, he's going to be there as a veteran to support his teammates. And again, hopefully he uh, heals well and is back up on his feet soon.
So a quick two and out for the Wildcats. And once again, Matt Zeroni will be called upon to punt this one away with the wind. Down there waiting for it is number nine, Jordy Kabamba. A high snap and an end over end. It'll go out of bounds at around the 36 yard line. And that's where the Calgary Colts will take over. So a good kick for Matt Zeroni and uh, some deep field position for the Calgary Colts. And what a difference the punting game is making. You can see even see in the lineup of the Wildcats, they don't have anybody on side. They know they're going to get a good kick, and he's been punting the ball well. And, of course, when you can make it bounce and go out of bounds right away, there's no return. So that's a great job, and they've gained some field position already. We'll see what the Calgary offense now has in store. Not backed up right to their own goal line. Let's see if they can move the ball a little bit. Ball on the 36-yard line. Dylan Pye, single setback. There's the snap, and, and it comes loose. But uh, I'll tell you what. Great job by number 22, Landon Rose, to uh, jump on that one. It, it's, it, it, now that's happened a couple of times with, uh, with Dylan Pye. He kind of looks away and the ball comes to him. Yeah, and that one was really low, obviously expecting a little bit higher, went right, right through his legs, hit the legs of the running back and bounced forward. Really tough position to start putting your offense in. And again, they've started a few drives at second and longer distances. That's not an easy feat to overcome. All right, there's the snap and back in the pocket, looking downfield. Pass is incomplete and caught nicely by one of the assistant coaches of the Calgary Colts. Intended on the far side for number 19, Jesse Kuntz. Yeah, and the Calgary, again, their offense is really struggling to get going, but I actually like the play calling that they're, go, they're going with here. You know, it's just three steps and the ball's coming out, so you're, you're really eliminating the pressure that the defensive linemen are going to be putting on the young quarterback. But again, you've got to have receivers on the same page so they can... Um, complete some passes. Here's the punt, almost blocked. It's going to be another short one, and it will go out of bounds in front of the Calgary bench at around the 45-yard line. So, gr again, great field position for the Cal for the Edmonton Wildcats, but uh, Rob, they're just unable to uh, to take advantage of the field position that they've had except for that uh, initial touchdown. Yeah, they really are. And again, credit goes to the Calgary Colts defense. They're, they're defending their own end the entire game. And they're really, for the most part, other than the first one, keeping them out of the end zone. And um, just going back to that punt, you can see they actually had one of the onside guys trying to get downfield knowing that it's going to be a short punt. But from a punting standpoint, he's got to keep the ball out of the air. He's got to have low driving kicks if he wants to have, get any yards on those. Mackenzie Lawson into the game for the first time and rolling to, who's out to the outside. There's a pass from Colton Hippie, complete to uh, number 13, Brady Kerr, or uh, make that uh, Kieran Bell. And Bell will pick up a, a good game. We talked about that edge matchup with number 48. And again, great fake by, fake by Colton Hippie. Draws number 48 down into the running back. And then he was able to pull it and find space on the edge and complete a pass. Mitchell Burns from his linebacker position. There's the handoff. It was second and about a yard or so. And well, Mitchell Burns is probably going to see that a lot on the edge. Again, Edmonton likes to run that quite a bit, just always reading it. So if he does collapse, and so he's going to have to be disciplined. And again, you want, he wants to make plays in the run game as well. And so he's going to have to balance that out to make sure the quarterback doesn't get the edge. Because although he got the edge there and had quite a bit of space, it was only a short completion. You give him that much time, they're going to find some players downfield. Well, they had to get the ball over the 35-yard line. Looks they're short by maybe the length of the football. So it'll be third and short. Hippie plows ahead on the left side, and he will have enough for the first down. We've got 5.49 to go here in this uh, first half. And for the Edmonton Wildcats, a big first down. And we'll see if they can take advantage here. Ball on the 34-yard line. Hippie still in a quarterback. Motion goes left. There's the handoff. Josu stopped after a gain of a couple of yards. Looked like he may have run into one of his blockers, but another good job by that defensive line of uh, sealing up that hole. Well, I think when it was one of the linebackers, you see the 30 front they have, and I think it's number 45, Austin Daisy, comes shooting in low and takes out the legs. And again, when you have a quick running back, you want to wrap him up low, make sure he doesn't get going and doesn't get into space. Daisy, the leading tackler on this team going into the game with uh, 27 tackles to his uh, 
credit for the Calgary Colts. Out of the shotgun, rolling left, Hippie being hurried, gets the football away, and it is complete on the sidelines. A great job of staying in bounds for number 88, Zach Burgess. Well, great pressure by the Calgary defense, and again, they read this well. So again, then you see him pull the ball at number 95 and then 47 right in behind him, but great job of a veteran quarterback with guys hanging off his jersey, delivering the ball to a space where his receiver and only his receiver has a chance to catch this ball. And I mean, that's a difficult throw when you've got to throw across your body like that. W with two guys chasing <laughs> you down, that was a great completion and great effort. So it'll be another first down for the Edmonton Wildcats ball on the 21 yard line. Handoff to Josu and he is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage Dennis and out there to make the tackle was number 95, play. Dennis Chekic. So once again, the Calgary defense is continuing to make plays and again, they're making work hard for the Wildcats offense. Although they gave up that first drive, they haven't given up much since and they've gotten pressure and the Cats have got away with a few completions when the quarterback's in the grass that was, as we just saw. And again, that run game is slowing down a little bit. And so again, momentum may be slowing a little bit and let's see if the Calgary defense can hold them out of the end zone one more time. A loss of a couple, it'll be second and 12. Ball on the 23 yard line, Hippie. Back in the pocket. And the ball knocked down on that attempted pass. Getting the uh, hands up was number 94, Chris Pete Schwartz. Yeah, again, defense coming up big when they need to. They are holding them out of the end zone. And you know what? That's all you can really ask from the sidelines of the Calgary Colts right now is keep them in the game, give their offense a chance to get a little bit of momentum and start moving that ball. Again, at this point, they're only a couple scores away and the game is still close. All right, so Tanner Holt with the field goal attempt from about the 29 yard line. He's got the wind with him. Ball is up. It is through the goal post. And with 3.29 to go in the first half, it's a 13 nothing football game in favor of the uh, Edmonton Wildcats. But uh, again, Rob, uh, uh, really a win for the, for the Calgary defense. It really is, and again, they can't, they can't continue to give up field goal after field goal because on a cold day like today, that may be enough. But again, their offense needs to get things going. And again, they've tried to establish a run. They've had a little success, but most of their success is coming on the outside edge. And so they're giving a little bit of misdirection, trying to get their athletes to the edge. All right, twin setbacks this time for Dylan Pye. Motion goes to the right. There's the pitch out. Far side, and it is taken there by number 22, Landon Rose, but he is tackled in behind by his equal number, uh, 22, Isaiah Brown. Again, we keep talking about that secondary that's coming up making plays, and again, once again, you see them coming up making plays, and Calgary trying to get to the outside with speed, but matching speed with speed, they just couldn't do it. And again, a lot of flow, and again, one guy coming through, in this case, it was Isaiah Brown. So it'll be second and 10, ball on the 27 yard line. Landon Rose is the setback. We've got three receivers to this side. Passing situation, back in the pocket. Dylan Pye fires, it is complete. Just over the, no, they knocked out of his hands just at the last minute. Uh, it's intended out there for number 21, Dylan Minshew. And uh, really that's the first time that we've mentioned uh, Minshew in this football game and he is their their leading ground gainer yeah and uh brady kerr number 11 in there to break that up almost almost getting a chance there to uh, actually pick the ball off he was close and again he's going to be looking to come downhill on that little out pass again they move the ball up to the 27 yard line it's third and 13. they're going to go for it or second and 13 rather there's the pass, it is complete on this side. And taking off with it is number 18, Marlon Zamora. And Zamora will pick up and up for the first down. And uh, the defender out there, number 30, uh, Josh Kober kind of committed to going after that football, didn't he? I, I, th I think they thought it was going to be overthrown and there was going to be a pick six going the other way. Great job by elevating, getting off the ground and pulling that ball in. And then, of course, making a play in space and getting the first down. So a big first down for Dylan Pye and the Calgary Colts. There's the misdirection once again in the handoff. 
taken by Minchel, and Minchel plows ahead Dylan for Minchel a gain of about maybe three or four yards. They say four, so it'll be second and six. And great job by linebacker Ben David. You can see he's flowing with the guy, sheds the block of number 54, and then is able to make the tackle. Again, those O linemen need to turn their hips on those blocks to give their running back space. Landon Rose alone set back, three receivers to the far side, looking that way. The pass is complete at the 50, and immediately taken down is uh, number 15, Tarek Anderson. And a good job of coverage again, Isaiah Brown out there. Well, and you can see once again from the replay, it's three steps, ball comes out. That is a long way to throw the ball, especially with the wind against you. Arrived just in time. We'll see how hungry these DBs get today, see if they try to jump another one of those. Well, Josh Cobra playing the man that time in on the tackle. Hand off, up the middle, Minchel. With another gain of about uh, three or four yards. Minchel has not uh, had the season that he would have hoped to. Still one of the leading receivers and one of the leading uh, rushers as well. But uh, he's, been, he's been a little injured throughout the rest of the, the, most of this season. Yeah, when you lose key guys to injuries on and off throughout the season, it can really impact the success of a team. And Calgary struggled a little bit this year to get things going. And again, they're looking again today to move this ball as they are, you're seeing their offense do right now. Motion goes to the left. Looking into the middle, there's the pass. It is complete at the 35-yard uh, line, taken there by number 82, uh, Brandon McIsaac. And a first down, and all of a sudden, this Calgary offense is on the move. They must have heard you. Well, you can see right from the get-go, Dylan Pye is getting the snap into his hands. He's settled that down. The offensive line are getting him protection when there's no extra man coming, and he's delivering the ball into great zones. Moving this way, High gets the ball away just over the 30-yard line at about the 28, complete to number 19, Jesse Kuntz. And as the game goes on, you can almost see Dylan Pye getting that, uh, that confidence going. Well, he's getting time in the backfield, and whether that's by just having good protection or moving the pocket like we just saw in that last play, he's obviously gaining that confidence, which is really important for this Calgary offense. Landon Rose. The single setback, hand off to Rose on the right side. He finds a little bit of room, but then is taken down after a gain of just a couple yards on the play. He needed four. Looks like they'll give him one, and it'll be third and three. So now yeah. here's the situation we talked about earlier. It, uh, is it a field goal or is it going to be a punt into the wind? Well, I, it looks like their offense is staying on the field. I think with about a yard and a half, maybe two to go, depending on what it looks from down that on might the be a sideline. long two <laughs> wildcats are going to call a timeout just in the nick of time with 57.9 seconds to go in this uh, first half and uh, obviously deciding exactly what they need to do to stop this uh, this play with uh, third down and just over two yards to go. And the reality is in this situation, a punt isn't gonna really help you. If you do punt it into the end zone, they get it out at the 20, that's only a net gain of six yards. If you kick a field goal, it sets up possibly a great return. And we know that the Cats have some great returners and the ability to break a big one. So you know what, this is really almost a non-decision for the coach, I think, and he needs to go. They're down 13, nothing. Now's the chance the offense does have some momentum going. So they can keep this drive and get some points before the half, that's gonna help big time going into the second half all right the offense getting set up third down a long two Dylan Pye at quarterback right in behind him is Landon Rose got uh, three slot backs two of them on this side three receivers on this side of the field now everybody heads down there's the sweep and the handoff left side and taken down just at the line of scrimmage was number 19, Jesse Koontz. But I think we're going to have a, a penalty. Not sure who it's going to go against, but it looks like it'll be Calgary. I think it looks like it's likely holding on number 22 on the edge. And so I don't think they gained the first down. So I think it's going to be first down for the Cats either way. Turnover for the Edmonton Wildcats. And they'll take the football over. The ball on about the 26-yard line. So now what do you do? You're, uh, you're, you've are you got 51.9 seconds to go. Do you just kill it off, or do you try and 
run it up a little bit. Well, I, th I think you're definitely going to run the ball. I'm not sure if uh, they want to just sit on this one. Um, and so, again, just trying to move the ball a little bit out, use their running game. They've got some good backs. They've, I mean, you play football, right? We're here to play football, and they're going to continue to play. All right, in the backfield is number 33, Matt Heinrichs. Heinrichs on the play action, pass into the middle and out of the hands of the intended receiver down there, number 85, Mackenzie Lawson. He's kind of a little bit behind him, but uh, he should have had it, really. Yeah, again, a tough adjustment. Again, Colton was going to get him flushed out of the pocket in a hurry there. Had to kind of pull it down from the flat, throw it to the inside guy. And again, that's a tough ball when you're rolling to your right, kind of not throwing all the way back across the field, but definitely throwing kind of across your body a little bit more than you're used to in that uh, couldn't quite get it out in front of the receiver. All right, double set for the Wildcats. Handoff taken by number 33, Matt Heinrichs. Heinrichs gets out of bounds, shy of the first down by maybe two and a half, three yards or so. But he kills off the clock and uh, the Wildcats are still alive, but they uh, decide that they probably be a smart thing to kick it away at this point probably at this point i think it would you mean calgary's going to get a few plays here and so again you know calgary obviously leaning on their special teams now see if they can get a little bit of a return here and uh, give their offense maybe one more shot at getting a couple points on the board before the end of the half just taking a look at the eskimo flags atop uh, commonwealth stadium and they're not uh, quite as uh, straight out as they were at the beginning of the game there's a good kick down to about the 40 yard line it is taken by Noah Williams, Williams, and he'll run it back a couple. And the uh, Calgary Colts will take the football over at about the 45-yard line or so. Yeah, there's a flag down here on the near side. And again, in the vicinity of possibly like a holding from the uh, return team. So that may move the field or move the ball a little back. And looks like they're going to move it all the way down to about the 30-yard line. So 33 and a half seconds to go. Again, the question is, what do you do with it? Do you keep it on the ground? Do you go for, go for some points? Well, I think they're going to keep it on the ground. They're going to maybe try to spring a run. Because, uh, again, you don't want to be in a position where you're punting it back into the wind and possibly giving them really good field position because, you know, the punting game has struggled going in this direction. Dylan Pye takes the snap. There's the football into the middle. Little quick... Pass intended there for Dylan Mitchell, and he couldn't control it. And again, just over his hands. Yeah, unfortunately for uh, Calgary, he couldn't quite control that. And again, he wasn't really free running, even if he would have caught it. The tackle was right there. So good job by the uh, secondary of the Wildcats, or linebacking core of the Wildcats, to pick up those underneath guys and stay with them in coverage. Three receivers to the right side. There's the snap. He fumbles it. The ball is loose at about the 25 yard line. And the Wildcats are signaling that they found, they picked it up, and they have. Well, again, worst possible situation for Calgary to be in. Again, the young quarterback. Again, again, exchange problems, balls bouncing around in the feet of everybody. Wildcats coming up with it this time. And who else but Kevin Cochisarly coming up with it. And uh, I'll tell you what, Evan's having himself a whale of a football game. He is. He's definitely being a difference maker in there. And the Wildcats will take it over on the 27-yard line, deep in Calgary territory. Back in the pocket now, looking downfield. It's going to be over the head of everyone, including two of the intended receivers, one of them I being Dalton Latoski out of Wetaskiwin. Well, I'm not sure what the route combination was supposed to be there or if it was just a spacing issue, but a lot of defenders drawn to that area. And Colton just throwing it up there, hoping someone will come down with it again. We want to try to create pass, a passing game that has uh, a little bit more space between receivers so you're not drawing multiple defenders into the area. So it's second and 10, ball on the 27-yard line. Josu, the setback, back in the pocket. Hippie looking to the sidelines. There's no one there. It's going to be picked off at about the five-yard line and uh, miscommunication. A, a, a missed route, a route or whatever. Well, it, it was a wheel route by the outside guy, and again, the or one of the slot backs running a little bit of a wheel route, and it was timing. There is a flag out there, and so if he was held as he was going up to the wheel, and we can see here on the replay, looking that way, number 88 runs it out and up. A little bit of a collision happened there on the uh, the DB onto the receiver, but I'm not sure. In my mind, would that justify throwing a flag? 
All right, here's the call from Larry Leduc. Covering number 10, 10 yard penalty, first down. Illegal contact. And another wipe out the interception. And the Wildcats are now scrimmage. So the reception will go for not, and it'll move the football down to the 19-yard line. And from there, the Edmonton Wildcats with 12 seconds to go, looking to put some extra points on the board. Well, this game is still pretty close, so there's no doubt the Cats are going to try to get some points. Probably one, maybe two shots at the end zone with still time left to kick a field goal if they don't complete either of those in the end zone. Three receivers out to this side. Motion goes left. Hand off, Josu, Josu up to the 10 and is finally wrestled to the turf just Three over the 10 yard line. He'll be short of the first down. Runs about six seconds off the clock. So uh, it will be time for Tanner Holt perhaps to come out and try the field goal. Let's just see what the coaching staff calls. Colton well, Hippie is going to stay out there. Well, with the clock running, you probably could have called a timeout and stopped the clock. But with the clock running, definitely uh, field goal time because they're not going to get two plays off. Yeah, okay. So they uh, call Hippie off the field. And out will come Tanner Holt and the field goal team. And that, may, that may have been just a little bit of a miscommunication with the offense wanting to stay on the field. They should have called the timeout, preserved all six seconds. Probably could have ran one play, taken a shot at the end zone, then used their field goal unit. But they opt to kick a field goal right here. From the 18, the ball is through the uprights. And with time expired, it is the Edmonton Wildcats 16 and the uh, Calgary Colts no score. And... Uh, as interesting first half in as much as the, the Wildcats really could be up by a whole bunch more than uh, what they actually are. Yeah, they pretty much dominated the first half. Special teams obviously took advantage of the wind when they were, they were working with the wind and uh, Calgary was punting into the wind. And now, um, now we're going to see what adjustments they make at halftime. All right, uh, let's go downstairs. And uh, Kevin yeah. Donnan has a, a look at that, a smiling head coach <laughs> they're shocked you're smiling darcy what, what do you think of that well it's, i mean again it's tough in the last game of the year to try and keep everything but the way we handled the clock in the last minute it's a little disappointing we, we got the, we got lucky again we got a fumble but they should have never got a possession and then we got lucky at the end where we get points out of it so it's one of those things where you know we're not firing at all cylinders but but defensively you've got to be pretty happy with with what uh, your defense did in the first half yeah i mean we get them second long we take a <clears throat> offside penalty oh. and then uh, they convert on a, a one and that was basically the only drive they had and so like, I'm pretty happy with where we're playing defensively we've got some lucky breaks but yep. uh, we got to be a lot better hopefully the second half so we can end, end the, the you know our season off on a high now you made the most of those opportunities early in the first quarter but the, the those opportunities have been few and far between so how are you going to get the the offense going in the second half well again it's we've had a good running game I think uh, there's been opportunities to complete some passes we've, we've dropped the ball and and uh, I think, again, it's just a little sense of urgency and, and let's, again, go out feeling good about ourselves, making plays, not relying on them to, to give us opportunities. Now give us a sense of just how important this game is to your guys. You're up by 13. Uh, they sense with with the graduating players, the, the great ceremony, the really classy ceremony at the beginning of the game. Uh, just how important is this for your guys to close this thing out and to head into 2018 with some optimism? Well, this is basically what we said. This is like game one for, for next year. Uh, we could be one of the few teams that gets to end their season off with a win. You know, you have to be in this situation. The only other team that's going to do it is the team that wins the national championship. So, uh, again, it's again our guys have worked hard. You know, we deserve to be a little bit better, we think, right now. But, uh, again, we just want to play Wildcat football, be proud. And then, like I said, there's been a ton of supporters for us. We want to, again, make sure that they're proud of the effort we put forth and, and we, we go come away with a win. Good luck the rest Thank of the way and in, in the second half. That is head coach Darcy Park, and we will send things upstairs to Dave Rozak. Dave? Thanks very much, Kevin, appreciate that. And it is my honor, it is my pleasure to talk to an old friend. And, and we, won't, we won't use the word old, but Arnie <laughs> Enger is with us. Arnie, uh, Arnie, you and I go back probably, what, 30, 40 years or so. At in least, fact, we used least. to do uh, some hockey games together from the old uh, arena in St. Albert back, back many, many years ago. Yeah, and various other places too. And I, I'm trying to think of, uh, I was trying to think of a word to use to introduce you, and, and the only thing I could come up with is Mr. Everything as far as <laughs> football is concerned in, the, in, this, uh, in this city. Uh, Arnie, you, you, you just love the, the, the amateur football in Edmonton. 
Well, I do. Uh, it goes way, way back, though. I've been involved or thinking about football for a lot of years. When I went to high school in, in my hometown of Irma, the Wainwright School District was good enough to give us a football, a mm -hmm. football, which we kicked around in the fall, and I got interested in the game. And, of course, the Eskimos came into the, the uh, CFL in, in those days with... Uh, Anna Stukas and those guys oh and my. so on. And uh, mm -hmm. so I go way back with, <laughs> with this game. And that got, I got interested in it and uh, started to uh, learn a bit about it when I was at university. And then uh, uh, went to Red Deer High School, started my teaching career, and got the opportunity to coach the game. Was there ever a turning point that where you said, okay, this, this is my avocation for the rest of my life as far as uh, that's, uh, that's concerned? Well, I never looked at it from that respect, although... Like in the 1960s, I had some great experiences coaching the high school team at Jasper Place, and then I had the opportunity mm -hmm. with the Huskies one year, and then the Bears for the Vanier Cup. And uh, there was a, a hiatus there, but I became an on-field official to keep an interest yeah. in it, and then went from there to developing uh, concern. And, and with regard to high school football and looking after the yardstick crews, the timers, the PA people, and doing some PA for them myself, because when I was a coach and you went to a game, you had to dig out the football to play with, to start with, and uh, and then get a yardstick crew out of the stands and so on. So I sort of made, or had the thought, if I ever got an opportunity where I could do something about that for the coaches so they wouldn't have to do that thing, I <laughs> formed a little, little, uh, consulting firm and I've been doing that for quite a few years assigning those people and taking that burden off them and so on now obviously over the years you you've noticed some tremendous changes in amateur football particularly at the high school level what stands out most uh, most to you well yes the game has, has changed on uh, so much like back when I was coaching uh, uh, years ago like I was the head coach and I was the head coach and I Anything that went on that field or came off or we did, I knew of it and I'd planned it. And we had three uh, uh, assistant coaches and it was my idea in those days and I, when I was assistant coach that uh, they were technique coaches, that I was a technique coach. I could have input into what we did but the head coach made all the decisions and decided what went on and off and so on. And uh, as assistants we worked hard on the ability of the players to play and, and tried to give them the best teaching of the technique for what they did. I think the operative word there is teaching. Uh, yes. As, you know, the, the assistants back then, the teachers and, and teaching the techniques. Well they were, yeah, although I had uh, people come in when I was at Jasper Place for, that were playing with the Huskies or had played with the Huskies and came out and volunteered as coaches there and that sort of thing. But but the, the game has changed so much and, and the, with all the tinkering with the blocking rules and <laughs> the concussion things and, and so forth and so on that go on now, it's, it's, it's very difficult. And, and it's, I don't find it that, <laughs> that interesting anymore. And I would hate to be, uh, well, maybe if I, I thought about it, I would do it, but an on-field official, it's a very difficult game to officiate now compared to what it was back when I did that. And even at the professional <laughs> level, and especially oh, yeah. as you mentioned with <coughs> the rules, it's, it's just been, it's been tremendous changes. I, I know that you, you must have a lot of memories uh, going back over the, the 30 or 40 years. Uh, anything in particular that, that, that comes to mind? Oh, there are a lot of highlights, but uh, the years at Jasper Place High School were really good. And we, uh, when I started there, we weren't in the city, any city league, but we got in there and during the 60s, we won a couple of city championships and got to the final game another time uh, uh, once other time and didn't win it uh, those were highlight years uh, and I think probably of all the highlights those were the years that were the best well I, I think and I speak for a lot of us here not only in the room but here at the on the football field uh, we we have a lot of memories of you and and of course your, your voice especially on the PA system here and and I know personally some great memories back uh, in the days when the old uh, videotron and 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 QC TV uh, doing play-by-play -play right. and, and you doing the, uh, uh, the the color commentary. I want to thank you for those years. I want to thank okay. you for your service to uh, to football and, and amateur sports in general in Edmonton, and, and good luck the rest of the way. In your retirement, and take my word for it, retirement's a good word. 
Well, thank you very much for doing this. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Arnie Inger, and let's go downstairs. Once again, here's Kevin Donner. Well, thanks so much, Dave, on this Thanksgiving Day weekend. We uh, obviously give thanks for football, and next weekend we've got football action right here at Clark Park with the Prairie Football Conference semifinal. The Edmonton Huskies will be hosting the Regina Thunder. 1 o'clock October 15th will be the kickoff against Regina. It'll be a, a fantastic game. Of course, the Huskies lost last night 38-28 to the Saskatoon Hilltops, which sent the Huskies into second place. They'll play the Thunder, the Hilltops will play the Rifles, and that and the semifinals are set, the final four in the PFC. So it'll be an exciting weekend, of course. Stay right here with ICU Video and our YouTube channel. Of course, you can check out all of the action from the 2017 season. We have all of the games from the Wildcats and Huskies and all of the exciting action of the PFC. And a really a magical season for both of these clubs. Of course, the Huskies unveiled their Hall of Fame this season and the Wildcats of course broke that two year winless streak so it's been an exciting season here on the turf at Clark Park with both the Huskies and Wildcats and we look forward to next weekend's playoff action so stay right here with ICU video and we'll send things back up to Dave and Rob Herod as we get ready for the second half guys. Thank you very much, Kevin. Appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we talked at the beginning that uh, we thought the special teams were going to be all important in this football game. And you take a look at uh, a couple of the statistics in punting. Matt Zeroni with 243 yards uh, on seven punts and Jaden Sheelan uh, only uh, a net of 196. Yeah, so there's a little bit of difference there in the punting game. Again, that's the kind of the biggest stat. Some other things that stuck out to me, uh, both quarterbacks actually not doing a whole lot in the air, kind of 5 for 12, 5 for 11, 40, 50 yards. Um, the biggest amount of offense is coming from the running game of the Wildcats, and that's really, really most of that came on the first drive. I think the first drive was about 40, 40 yards or so, and that was the majority of their offense. Other than that, it's been punting back and forth a couple first downs here and there. But uh, what I did notice at the end of the half is, although the Calgary team ended up turning the ball, over late and gave up a field goal there. I mean, they actually started to have some success through the air and a uh, young quarterback maybe getting a little bit more confident. I think Calgary's going to look to build off that in a second to get that offense going. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we, we heard Coach uh, Darcy Park say that uh, they really did miss a number of golden opportunities to put more points on the board. Well, there's no doubt Calgary's got to feel that the, the lead they've given up right now is actually pretty fair. Um, you know what? It could have been a lot, lot worse. And uh, the Cats are probably saying the same exact same thing to their players. Like, you know what? We left a lot of points out there. We need to capitalize on those opportunities. And for the Wildcats uh, and the Colts teams, if they want to turn their programs around and get them going in the right direction, which I think they probably both are at this point, they need to make sure they're learning those lessons right now and so they can come out next season and not make a lot of those mistakes again. All right, in the Calgary dressing room, uh, what is coach Tim Kearse uh, d does he bring uh, Dylan Pye aside and, and maybe uh, talk to him specifically about uh, the second half well I'm sure they're going to be talking to him and saying okay what are you comfortable with what can we get going here you know we saw some of that late in the quarter mm -hmm. and I think they're going to go back to that but I think they're also going to talk to the rest of the team and say hey we need to rally around our young quarterback and we got to do our job because it's not all him we've seen some bad snaps we've seen protection break down and hey if you want to be successful it doesn't matter if you got a veteran or a young guy You've got to, everyone's got to do their job who's on offense or on defense. Particularly the offensive line. I mean, they have to protect a young man like, uh, like Dylan Pye. Yeah, and as soon as we saw that protection happen, mm -hmm. he started to deliver the ball. All right, so the nerves are gone. He's getting the protection. Things are going better for Calgary. The one thing that uh, I think the Wildcats can't afford to do is let this guy get some uh, get some confidence under his belt. No, they want to keep the pressure on, and I think their defensive guys are going to understand, okay, this guy's throwing a few balls. Let's send a little bit more pressure. Okay, send four guys add a linebacker, add two linebackers, because when they're getting guys in his face, there's a lot more mistakes happening. All right, wind is dying down a little bit out there. Do you expect to see uh, the ball put into the air a little bit more? Well, I think Calgary's going to have to. They're not having any success running the ball. Mm -hmm. But again, if you can pass the ball, that will help the run game a little bit, and they can use that a little bit. But I think we're going to see them throw the ball. It's not wet out there. It's a little bit cold, but they should be throwing the ball again. And I think for the Wildcats, I think we will see more running game. Uh, Dylan Pye, not a doesn't appear to have the strongest of arms and, and a number of his passes uh, into the wind here in that uh, second quarter uh, just uh, weren't getting there. They just didn't have the zip on them that they need. Well, we've definitely seen the wind impact the punts wow. and you know throwing into it again, a couple balls we saw him throw deep. It wasn't, he wasn't planting and throwing it properly. And so your quarterback coach is gonna look at that and say, you've got to plant your back leg, you got to transfer your weight, you got to deliver that ball. That all can only happen if he's got the protection. So as we see the protection, it'll be interesting to see him throw the deep ball with the wind. 
team losses. Uh, the uh, Calgary Colts with a total of 31 yards. Nothing as far as the uh, uh, the Wildcats are concerned. Uh, penalties and as well uh, uh, a couple of uh, sacks uh, yeah, really haven't helped the Calgary Colts in their Colts. cause. Uh, we'll we'll talk more about that. Let's right, uh, go downstairs right now. Again, here's Kevin. Well, thanks so much, Dave. I'm here with the head coach of the Calgary Colts, Tim Kears. Uh, I guess it's safe to say your team has something to play for with that devastating injury uh, to Bailey in the in the first half. Yes, yes, we do. So we have a backup quarterback in now. It's a young man. It's just coming to first year, and uh, you know, hopefully in the second half, we'll be able to protect him and be able to do some things running the football. And he and Dylan Pye looked pretty comfortable towards the end of the second quarter, didn't he? Well, I think his first few snaps, he probably, you know, being an 18-year-old kid, I'm quite sure he was pretty shocked to be in the football game at that point. But uh, I think he gained his composure pretty good there in the second quarter. And, you know, let's line him up for the next 30 and see what he can do for us. Colts are, an, I mean, obviously a very proud franchise. And 2017 has been a tough one. Uh, what did you tell your guys in the room at the half? Well, at the half, hey, keep, keep playing for each other. No matter what happens, let's move on to the next play. And uh, let's see what happens in 30 minutes, which will be. Well, good luck the rest of the way in this game, and good luck going into 2018. Thanks for joining us at the half. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Tim Kearse, the head coach of the Calgary Colts, as we get ready for the second half. So let's send things back upstairs. I love saying this to the president and sergeant at arms of the Edmonton chapter of the Ottawa GG alumni. Let's send things up to Dave and Rob for the call of the second half. Up to the GGs. Hey, Rob, do you want to be the president or do you want to be the general manager? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I hear they got warmer weather out in Ottawa right now. So. About 20 degrees or so, <laughs> yeah. Positively balmy down here now, guys. Look at the sunshine. It's gorgeous. There you go. And the wind has died down a little bit as well. So uh, we should be in for a pretty good second half of football. And interesting to note that while the uh, Wildcats have been out on the field for the last five minutes or so, we are still awaiting, and here they come finally, uh, the entrance of the Calgary Colts. And uh, obviously a little extra preparation time in the uh, in the dressing room yeah well you, again you want that messaging to go out to your team you mean yes it is the last game of the year yes there's some veterans that aren't going to be playing uh, after today but the reality is is you want to get them motivated you know they've done a decent job to stay in this game considering the problems they've had punting and uh, just moving into the wind and so again the defense has done a good job they're going to have to continue to do that. They can't afford to get worn down, which is typically what sometimes can happen. The defense gets worn down the second half. We see that. Their defense is going to have to continue to step it up and play well like they did in the first half. And hopefully for the offense, they're going to get a little bit more going. The passing game, the run game, those pieces will start come together for Calgary. Well, there's no question the uh, uh, defense of the Wildcats has shut down the one of the league's leading uh, uh, yard gainers and that is Dylan Minshew. He's uh, right through the air. He's uh, he's great on the ground, but uh, really hasn't been able to do too much. And and certainly the the Colts need him to be uh, to be more active out there on the field. Yeah, they're going to have to find creative ways to get him the ball in space so he can use his athleticism. And again, just hearing the Cats break from their uh, huddle here before they head out. Um, to start this second half. You can see the emotion is still there, and that's something Calgary is fighting against right now. We saw it at the beginning of the game with a quick turnover and a score. They're still battling that, so they need to get something going here, try to maybe to calm that down, put a little doubt in the minds of the Wildcat players, and then take advantage of that and move the ball and put some points on the board. All right, and again, the uh, Wildcats will be kicking off to the Calgary Colts. The Colts will have the wind at their backs for the third quarter. Uh, the wind for what it is, certainly uh, and nowhere near what it was at the beginning of this football game. And out there to do the honors will be Tanner Holt. Holt gets a good end over end kick down to about the 25 yard line taken there by Dylan Minchel and Minchel carries it up ahead all the way nearly to the 50 yard line a good run back of about 25 yards by dylan minchel well and on cue as we talked about at the half we need to get the ball in his hands and there you go uh, probably the best starting field position for calgary all day they've got the wind at their back they're really going to want to take advantage of this in the third quarter well you know minchel coming into this game had 109 carries for 568 yards and four touchdowns and on top of that 31 receptions for 317 yards and one touchdown. So he's dangerous on the ground and through the air. The question is, can Dylan Pye get the ball to him? We're about to find out. There's a snap, and Pye takes off with it himself and 
moves the ball ahead for about maybe five or six yards and a designed play obviously and that's designed to give uh, pie a little bit more confidence yeah and you know what it also allows your quarterback just to get comfortable into the game let him take that first hit again he gets tackled you know not a lot of decision making to happen there just take the ball set up and away he goes we'll see what he can do now here on second down second and five ball on the 54 yard line again a bad snap he fumbles it picks it up and fires it complete to Dylan Minchel and Minchel uncovered really picks up another gain of close to 17 yards well you're gonna probably see uh, in the replay here there's a little bit of a pick play here as one guy goes one way number 82 kind of just lines up just caused a little bit of distraction the linebackers can't keep up with them great play design nice easy pass given the protection and now Calgary's in great field position Ben Davidge in on the tackle for the Wildcats now over center Pi, misdirection, handoff, left side, taken by number 30, Omari Fraser. And Fraser, Omari Fraser the ball is going to pick up enough for the first down. Well, that's the third time, I think, if not the fourth time that we've seen that fake toss counter. And again, they continue to go back to it and they continue to run it and have success. That was probably the biggest gain uh, last couple Fraser times they've gained first downs with that. So again, mixing it up, going to what works and getting this young guy comfortable. All right, Mitchell motioning left. Pass into the middle, it is complete, touchdown! I think they called him down at the one yard line. We'll check the, we've got the advantage of seeing the replay. Not sure he was down or if he landed in, but we'll see on this replay. But what a great job by the young quarterback, seeing where he's going and delivering the ball. That was awfully close. It looked like his knee actually hit the line, but they mark it down at the first, at the one yard line rather. There's a snap and Pi coming awfully close. He will be and in for the Pye touchdown. And, goes the yard and the Dylan Pi, in his That's first game, in his first Colts season touchdown. with the Calgary Colts, comes up with his first touchdown. Got to be a great one for the kid. Well, and fighting hard to get across that goal line. And it looks like they're going to be leaving their offense on, looking at the score being 16-6. The reality is with this two-point conversion, they're still only down one score in a two-point conversion. So good decision by the coach. See if they can draw within eight. All right, three receivers to this side. And looking into the middle, the pass is incomplete. And uh, in and out of the hands of uh, number 19, Jesse Coots. Not sure if he was the intended receiver. Uh, somebody else cut in front of him. Uh, there's two guys running the cross, and he kind of threw it up in the middle. Again, two chances. Goes off one buddy's hand, and then uh, number 19 had his second chance at it. Unfortunately, the conversion's not good, and so now they're uh, left with six points. There you go. And with 12.28 to go in the third quarter, it's a 10-point football game, 16-6 to in favor of the Wildcats over the Calgary Colts. And the Colts will be kicking with the wind, which I'm looking at the uh, ribbons over here on the, uh, the goalposts, and they're almost still. Kevin down here at, at uh, field level, Dave, and the wind is almost non-existent since uh, this the, the, since the sun came out, which, uh, you know, is, is hard to even get get the words out of your mouth after this morning. But uh, we're, we're having a beautiful fall afternoon now in the second half, guys. Wind is not even a factor. Good kick, end over end, down to about the 15-yard line. It'll be taken there by Isaiah Brown. Brown has some room on the outside and is hauled down just shy of the midfield strike. And Isaiah Brown... He likes to get to the outside, and if he can, if he can turn the corner, he's, he's got some room. Well, and again, he did a good job of following the blocks, and then once the gap was created, you can see there, a great shot on the replay down the sideline. As soon as it opened up, he was ready, and timing was perfect. Looked like uh, Kudzani Bingi with uh, a good block to set him free. There's the handoff. Taken on this side by number 33, Matt Heinrichs. And Heinrichs will get about uh, 13, 14 yards of the play. It'll be enough for a first down. Well, and some of this strategy starts coming into play. Coach Park and the offensive coaches know they're going into the win. If they can chew up some clock, get out of this third quarter, still hoping to maintain the lead, then they'll have the win in the fourth. And the run game is a big part of that. Heinrichs is the lone setback. He's been switching back and forth with uh, Bray Josu for most of this football game. And again, Heinrichs, this time he'll try the middle, keeps his legs pumping, and is finally taken down on a nice tackle by number 47, Reese Sampson. 
This time stopped after a yard by... Again, Cal, you're going to have to lean on that defense to keep him out. Again, the and offense came out, had the exact start they needed. The extra 30, 40 seconds in the locker room obviously paid off. They were able to move the ball down the field quite successfully with fairly little, fairly, fairly quite, e quite easy against the, uh, the Wildcats defense. And so now their defense is going to have to step up, see if they can get the ball back in the hands of their quarterback. Colts are back on that 30 defense of theirs. Back in the pocket now, looking downfield, Colton Hippie. He has a free man over on the far side, and, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, close call for uh, Matt Heinrichs, yeah, but again, taking, the, taking your eye off the football, and that's what happens. Well, kind of a little bit of a breakdown in the play, yeah, looking at the swing, but it was taken away, so Colton did a good job of running, hesitation a little bit behind him, and that's tough, tough for a running back, and not that the running backs can't catch the ball well, but typically they spend a little less time catching the ball, a little bit more time running the ball, and so tough catch for him and now they're in a punting situation. And Zeroni will be kicking this one away from about the uh, midfield stripe. No rush whatsoever, so he gets a low end over end punt down to about the 15 yard line. It is picked up there by Dylan Minchell and Minchell is stopped after a run back of about three yards. So uh, buried deep in their own zone. Good job by the, uh, by the special teams. Well, and again, you're looking at a net of about 20 to 25 yards there on the punt, which all things considered is really good. You know, I know uh, the wind is up and down. You I mean, you look at the top of Commonwealth and we have some stiff flags. We look at the top of the uprights here and they're kind of quiet. I think what we need though is I think we need to get Kevin a hat down on the field with a little flag on top so we can actually get the wind on the field and not just at the top of the goalposts. Oh no, a propeller would be nice. I'm not tall enough. <laughs> all right, this is Dylan Pye. Throwing long and intended out there about the 50-yard line and for number 17, uh, Dallas Burt. He was being double covered and uh, could not grab hold of that football. Well, I like the play call, stretching the defense, going to soften them up a little bit. Young quarterback obviously is feeling more confident. And again, now we just need some receivers to make plays and, and see if they can uh, connect on a few of those. Nice job by the free safety, Lucas Wessner, to come back on that one. And again, looking downfield, Dylan Pye being hurried. Now he's out of the pocket, still looking downfield, gets the ball away, and it is picked off at the 40-yard line. And it is Isaiah Brown with the interception. Well, I can see from here the coaching staff of Calgary is not very happy. There's a little bit of battling going on, and we'll see this in the replay. Hopefully there's a little battle on the sideline, and Isaiah Brown pulling on the jersey a little bit, but then being aggressive to the ball. It looks like he had him by the arm or the, the jersey there. Nonetheless, the Wildcats are taking over, and Calgary's defense is called upon once again to stop the Wildcat offense. Colton Hippie. Handoff, Heinrichs, he's got some room on the outside, he's at the 30, and it's taken down at about the 28 yard line, and he'll have uh, about a gain of well, around 11 yards or so. We'll see where they mark it. Well, they say a gain of about nine, they're gonna mark it right at the 30. He needed to get to the 29, so it'll be second and one. Over center, Hippie, plows ahead, and it looks like on second effort, he will get the first down. Good job by Colton Hippie. And Colton Hippie keeps. Well, and not, not only is their offense staying on the field, the clock is ticking away as they work into the wind, which is something, again, their offense wants to continue to do. I thought he might have had it uh, falling forward, but uh, they mark his knee down just over the 30-yard line. And like I say, he, uh, he had to get to the 31, so they will bring the measurement uh, stick out. Take a look at a good close up of that from our. They're going to be short, Dave, by here. about half the football. Going to be about short by about half the football. They had to get to just inside the 30 yard line, really the 29, but it's uh, about half the length of the football, guys. So the offense will stay out there, and Cody Olson comes in at quarterback for the Wildcats with 9.05 to go, 16-6 in favor of Edmonton. This is a, a big, big play for the Wildcats as we uh, take a look at, uh, looks like it is uh, Albany Laderoot being helped off the field very slowly and favoring that uh, left ankle. Uh, 
It's happened on a number of occasions this season. Talked about it so many times. Well, now both teams are in a position. Calgary has taken the momentum. You know, it's Edmonton's job now to see if they can take that back, move the ball, and take advantage um, of the offense and their ability to move the ball. Now, the defense at Calgary continues to make plays. They're going to have their work cut out for them here as we go through the third quarter. And because of that uh, offside penalty, they will move the kickoff up to the 50-yard line. And with a bit of a breeze behind him, Jaden Sheelan will be kicking this one off. Waiting for it down around the 10-yard line is Isaiah Brown. And on the far side, Matt Heinrichs. They'll kick it to Brown. Brown takes it at the 15-yard line. Looking for some room on the sidelines and is taken down at about the 25-yard line. Good tackle in there by number 34, Isaiah Zach Jets. Oh, well, we got a couple flags here, but again, on that return, he had an opening down the left side. It was kind of everyone came down flat, which is what you want to do, but there wasn't a lot of second level there. Fortunately for Calgary, their guys really closed that gap, shed their blocks initially, and tackled them and made sure he or, uh, limited the gain. I think uh, you and I were talking with the, before the game that we thought it might be a quick game because maybe the officials don't want to be out there in all this cold and wind and everything like that, but not so. Now the flags are adding up, and you know, again, we're referring back to the halftime stats. I think if I, my memory serves me correctly, Kyrie was four or five penalties for about 80 plus yards, almost twice as much as the Wildcats, and, and they continue to, special teams continue to be a problem. I think they've had probably four or five penalties on special teams, and again, every time that gives them an extra five or 10 yards that's just putting Edmonton in a better position to move the ball and this time around it moves the ball up to the 47 yard line Wildcats first and 10 759 to go and uh, again the officials conferring around the football not exactly sure what the situation is there but head referee is Larry Leduc the umpire is Matt Spetter the field judge is Andre Leduc the back judge is Romeo Cabongo. The side judge is Jesse Webb. The head, head linesman, Jordan Tatoski. And the line judge is Mark Buczynski. So with that, we are set to go from the 47-yard line. Colton Hippie, all the motion goes to the right. Hippie into the middle. The pass is complete to uh, Ronnie Oling, and Oling will carry the ball into uh, Colts territory and take him down at about the 48-yard line. We have uh, a penalty, a late penalty on the play. A little extracurricular going on. Well, gr and, yeah, great play selection by the Wildcats taking the rush. Again, they're starting to get a little bit of pressure up field, and you come around with a wide, a little slot back screen underneath. Unfortunately, a little bit of undisciplined play. He's going to move the Cats back. Zach Chomchuk taking the UR. And that will move the football back to the original line of scrimmage or thereabouts. First and a whole bunch. Actually, first and ten. This is Hippie back in the pocket. Looking into the middle, the pass is almost picked off. Doing a good job on the coverage was and Tom Getz, but he couldn't quite Tom pick, uh, hold it or bring it down. Intended out there for uh, number seven, Tanner Holt. Second and ten now. Well, both guys, both the coverage guy in man-to-man -man coverage and the free safety coming up, both had a shot of that. Very fortunate for Edmonton that Calgary's not holding on to the ball. All right, it'll be second and 10, ball on the 47. Three receivers to the far side, two on this side. Motion goes left. Everybody out of the backfield, and it's thrown away. Not sure exactly what happened there, but again, uh, you know, a cold football, a hard football, and it's, it's, it's tough to handle sometimes. Well, and what uh, Colton may have seen in the backfield, it's hard to tell from up here. He may have seen the coverage right in on that guy, knowing there's a risk of breaking it up, possibly being a fumble if it's going backwards. And we'll see here as he looks over. I mean, there's a guy standing right there on the guy he's throwing the ball to. So good decision by the veteran quarterback just to throw it into the, throw it into the bench and let your punting unit come out. A good read there by uh, Sendley Myrtle. 
from his defensive back position. There's, there's, a, the there's a bombing kick. <laughs> that was a stayed up in the air forever. Great job. Great coverage by Edmonton special teams. And a run back of about uh, seven yards on the play by Noah Williams. Williams will put the ball down at about the 36-yard line with well, 6.40 and, to go. And again, Calgary has that momentum. Let's see yep. if the offense can continue to move. They've got what little wind we, th we think is out there. Um, what well, little wind is at their backs, and they were able to move the ball last time. Let's see if they can keep that momentum going and get the offense to move the ball down to scoring position. Dylan Pye at quarterback taking over for the injured Bailey Wasdell. There's the handoff right side to the big guy, number 31, Bad Wayne Kiana. And uh, he gets the ball for the first time and uh, plows ahead for a gain of about nine yards on the play. He, he's built like one of those uh, fire plug type of uh, fullbacks. Well, and that's some downhill running that we haven't seen a lot of out of Calgary. They tend to try to get to the edge. Now they're using some muscle and they're bringing some beef up the middle. So it's second and a little bit less than a yard to go. It's a handoff once again. It is taken by uh, that Wayne Kiana. Well, and it, he stopped it, originally, but uh, yeah, well, great uh, second effort. He looked like he was going to come up short of the first down marker, but he kept his feet, kept his feet moving, pushing forward, driving over the pile, and he ended up getting the first down in the end. Gain was just over a yard. They mark it at about the uh, 47 yard line. And so when Keanu will come out and back into the football game is Landon Rose. Rose with motion to the left. He takes off into the flats with the passes into the middle, almost picked off. And back there was Jayden Isaiah Dalkey Brown, and he was being helped out by Jaden Donkey, but both of them had a legitimate shot at the football. Well, and Jesse Koontz, the receiver coming downfield, isn't even looking for the ball, and so I'm not sure why these guys are not at some point looking back, because again, maybe it's a different choice by the quarterback and they're usually they're used to the ball maybe going to the flat all the time but there's a couple times now tonight that we've seen receivers downfield ball flying towards them not even looking to locate that ball they got to make sure they're on the same page with their quarterback if they want to have any completions four receivers to the far side mix up in the backfield and now running out with it and taking off is dylan pie and he'll just run out of bounds and pick up a gain of a couple of yards or so on the play a little bit of a bump in the backfield and uh, uh, kind of threw uh, Dylan Pye off a little bit as he ran into Landon Rose. Yeah, and again, a lot of confusion in the backfield. And then once he got outside, there were no receivers open. Coverage by the Wildcats secondary is now forcing Calgary into a punting situation. So that's a good stop for the Wildcats. As, uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of this series, a uh, little momentum in favor of the Colts, but uh, the Cats defense comes up big. Here's the punt with the wind, and it's going to be an end-over-end end kick short down to the 35-yard line taken by Brown, and uh, Brown is stopped after a run back of two or three yards. And it looks like we have an injured Calgary player. That appears to be number nine, Jordy Kabamba. Kabamba, one of their top uh, uh, punt returners on both sides of the special teams, obviously. Yeah, another impact player that hopefully Calgary will uh, have the services of for the rest of this game. On the 28 yard punt. Kabamba, on the return. The, it looks like they're looking at his right at shin. Yard line. And it looks like he is going to get up and uh, is walking off. So he should be okay and ready to come back with 4.23 to go in the third quarter. We have a close one here at Clark Park. 16 to 13 for the Wildcats over the Colts. Could be a cramp too. Sometimes in cold weather conditions, you don't drink as much water. And sometimes dehydration can set in in these games. Motion goes to the right. Cody Olson at quarterback. Hand off to the right side. It is taken by Bray Josu, and Bray Josu is stopped after a gain of about a yard or so. Let's uh, let's go back downstairs, and again, here is Kevin. Thanks so much, Dave. Down here on the Wildcat sideline, and the entire defensive unit gathering together to talk about discipline. They want to stop the chatter and watch the undisciplined play because that's going to be a huge factor in a tight ball game. And right now, the Wildcats are talking about staying calm and staying disciplined, guys. 
Thanks very much, Kevin. Cody Olson at quarterback. Motion goes to the right. Olson with the play action. Pass in and out of the hands of number 13, Ronnie Owing. And uh, don't know how he missed that one, but it just it seemed to slide through his hands. Yeah, it came maybe a little bit earlier than he anticipated. But again, Calgary's defense now ending up. This is, it seems to be a defensive da a battle. Calgary obviously had an advantage in the, f in the beginning of this quarter, get some points on the board. And now it's going to be which offense is going to be able to get to the end zone next. And so with uh, 3.37 to go in the third quarter, the Edmonton Wildcats will be kicking this one away into the wind. Matt Zeroni standing at about his own uh, 19 yard, I'll make that uh, 24 yard line. Not yep. sure what the delay is out on the field. Now the play is finally whistled in. And Zeroni runs with it and then kind of pooch kicks it out of bounds at about the 50 yard line. And that was an intended pooch, but uh, gets it out of bounds out. and uh, Pretty good field position for the uh, for the Colts. Yeah, and again, they're kicking into the wind, and again, the wind is up, the wind is down. It's going across the field. It's going up and down the field. We do have a flag on the play, which will impact the end of this play. But again, aware of the wind and actually having the preparation done beforehand, whether it's an onside player or whether it's kind of running a little bit and then kicking. 15-yarder going against the Calgary Colts. Number one, Bennett Thompson. And that, that's going to move the ball back to about the 36-yard line. Yeah, and that result is pretty good for Edmonton, not so good for Calgary. Again, you could even see on that punt, uh, Matt Zeroni was trying to just kick it far enough that he could actually go and recover it. Unfortunately for him, it bounced out of bounds. He wasn't able to catch up to it. And let's see if the young quarterback can get this offense going again. We've got four receivers to this side. Everybody downfield, back in the pocket, looking into the middle. The pass is behind number 22, Landon Rose. And uh, he was wide open, uh, had uh, one of the linebackers chasing him, but good two or three yards behind him. Yeah, if he could have had that ball out in front, he'd still be running because, again, the receivers on this side were coming back towards him deeper, and he would have had some space to at least gain the first down, if not a lot more. Again, four receivers to this side. Back in the pocket, Dylan. Dylan Pye, and he's looking downfield. Now he'll take off with it and is stopped just over the 40-yard line. We have a flag in the backfield, and the official is indicating holding. Yeah, and you're going to see as he starts to roll out here, it looks like number 58 was holding on to catch the number, maybe number 44. And again, a lot of those penalties really comes from hard work. If you're a pass rusher and you're not necessarily getting, continue to work hard because the offensive line or the tight ends don't necessarily know how close you are. And if they have to hold you, they will. So that's a that's hard work by the defensive lineman to continue fighting through the block. And you end up drawing the flag, which puts Calgary in a tough position where they're going to have to punt the ball away. I think what may have helped the Wildcats, too, was a little bit of indecisiveness on the part of uh, Dylan Pye as to what he wanted to do and finally took off with it, but uh, only picked up a couple of yards. So here is the punt with the wind. It's a short one, though, down to the, about the 44-yard line, and it is taken by Jaden Dalkey. Donkey will run it back about three yards, and the uh, Wildcats will have good field position just shy of their own 50-yard line. And I think the flag on the play is likely going to be no yards, probably the 15-yard variety, uh, which is going to actually put them right into Calgary territory. No yards. Calgary, number 30. Really, uh, neither, neither kicking team has, has been able to take advantage of the wind, although, uh, you know, as we mentioned, it, it has died down considerably. But even in that first half, uh, neither kicking team really getting the good high floating punts away. Yeah, I think the only punt we saw was uh, Edmonton's last punt where they actually hung one up there and it was a booming punt and that was into the wind. So other than that, we really haven't seen much. Over center, Cody Olson, handoff, Matt Heinrichs. We have a flag and it'll be an offside call. Cody Olson hands off to number 33, Matt Hendricks. We'll see who it's going to go against. Three stamps and Greg Hendricks down. And we've got flags. Referee Larry LeDuc. 
We'll be talking to the Calgary Colts uh, captain, number 94, Chris Pete Schwartz, and so that would indicate it's going against uh, the Wildcats. It is an offside on the Wildcats. So again, penalties are continuing yeah, to play into field now. position in yeah. this game, putting offenses in the much more difficult positions. 2.15 to go in the third quarter. Wildcats by three. Cody Olson at quarterback. Play action, back in the pocket, now being chased out of the pocket. Got good speed though and throws it away. And out there in the general direction of number 13, Kieran Bell, but uh, I think he was just grounding that one just to get rid of it. He knew he yeah. was in trouble. Yeah, good decision by the young quarterback. Get it close enough to the receiver that it's not gonna be a grounding penalty and don't give up 10 or 15 yards. Because again, this game's still in the balance. He wants to make sure he's not the one making that mistake. And this, may get, this game may come down to the next team that makes a critical mistake. Olsen will stay out there at, at uh, quarterback, second and about 15. Olsen, of course, great speed, loves to run with the football. And uh, we may see that as this quarter goes on. There's the pass complete at the center field stripe, taken there by number 88, Zach Burgess. And Burgess is stopped after a gain of maybe four yards on the play. It'll be third and 11. Yeah, tackle by number 29, Kendrick. And, come in. and we uh, saw the secondary of the, the Wildcats be very aggressive. That you're seeing the Calgary secondary do the exact same thing, be really aggressive on those underneath things, reduce the, any gain after the catch. And that's what they did, getting the ball back in the hands of their offense. And Zeroni to kick this one away. Gets a good kick, it'll be a sideliner, and it bounces out at about the 33 yard line. So the, Cal the Calgary Colts will be starting again with a pretty fair field position, yeah, but uh, again, it'll be up to the uh, Edmonton Wildcats the defense to uh, put a stop to the momentum that the Colts have picked up here in the last few minutes. Well, Edmonton seems to be fine, just gaining 15 to 20 yards on the punt, yeah. you know, allowing their defense to get back on the field. Uh, you know, so, I mean, other than the first drive of this half, the defense has done their job and uh, kept the Calgary offense at bay. Dylan Pye lines things up. Three receivers on the far side. Pye looks that way. The pass is incomplete and intended out there for number 17, Dallas Burke. And uh, again, the young quarterback uh, just seems to be overthrowing his receivers. Yeah, again, Calgary going back to that wide receiver screen. They haven't really had a lot of success. Edmonton's played that quite well. I think we need to see them continue to stretch the field. We've seen that a little bit. They need to continue to do that so those DBs aren't playing quite so tight to the line of scrimmage. 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. Four receivers out on this side. Now there's five. Everybody heads downfield. And Dylan Pye being chased out of the pocket. He is being surrounded, gets out of the uh, grasp of a couple of tacklers and now gets it away and it is incomplete. Intended out there for Tarek Anderson. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm pretty impressed with this young man. Yeah, he's making some plays. He's getting some breakdown and pressure from the offensive line, but uh, off he goes. He's looting guys. I mean, there's a lot of guys chasing him. And then the heads up play of keeping his eyes downfield, seeing number 15 wave his hands there in the replay. Almost had a great completion for a first down, just couldn't quite bring it in. And had the uh, presence of mind to, to look over to the right as well to see if there was anybody open on that side, but decided to go downfield to uh, Tarek Anderson. Here is the uh, punt with the wind. It's a good one down to about the 45 yard line taken by Brown. Brown has some room up the middle and runs it back about 12 yards. And it'll be first down for the Wildcats in Colts territory. They're gonna have to sort out the flags. There's a couple of flags in the backfield near the punter. I'm not sure if there was any contact on the punter. You can see here in the replay, the one that was dropped. And it must've be some kind of holding, legal block going on uh, in the return game. All right, let's see what the officials are gonna call. Likely going to be against the uh, Calgary Colts. Referee Larry LeDuc consulting with the rest of his staff. And uh, according to one of the Calgary players, 
right, uh, number 45, Austin Daisy. It's going to be offsetting penalties. Listening in on the conversation. All right, here we go. Leduc has the uh, has the call. Let's hear what it is. Two against uh, Calgary and one against Edmonton. So once again, these offsetting penalties work in favor of the Wildcats. They're going to gain an extra five yards out of this one for what, the third time in this half? Yeah, although the reality is with that return, that may not work out in favor of the Wildcats quite as much because they may go back to the point where he caught the ball based on all the penalties. But I'm not going to figure that out. I'm going to let them do it, and then we'll just go from there. <laughs> There have been some strange, uh, some strange calls and, and uh, out there on the football field today, and uh, the officials obviously having a problem figuring things out. They're back at it again. I think they're trying to now uh, <laughs> explain to the players what's going on, so they can go back to their respective benches and explain to the coaches. All right, here we go. Play, there was three infractions. Edmonton, number 18, offside. That penalty is accepted. Calgary, 42, holding. Before the kick, that was declined. Calgary number 34, 15 yards, no yards, that's accepted. 10 yards penalty in difference, free kick. Third down. So 10 yards difference, and it will be in favor of the uh, Wildcats. And that will put the ball in pretty good field position. Unless they run a fake punt yeah. here. <laughs> and then. Uh, there you go. But it's uh, it's with the wind, so that's a good thing for Jaden Sheelan. Gets a good one away down to the 50-yard line, and already they are in positive yardage. It'll be uh, no yards, 15-yarder against the uh, Colts, and running out of bounds is Jaden Dalkey. He runs it back about 10 yards, so that should bring the football down to about the uh, 30, about the 25-yard line. Yeah, interesting that Calgary is still struggling with that punting game. It's not even always the punts as we saw in the first half. Now there's been penalties that's been really hurting them, and that one again is going to cost them some more. And we have another meeting of the minds in the middle of the field. You can see there's two penalties here. I think the first one's no yards, but there may be something later too because I think a second flag came in, so there may be more than one penalty. And we may be here till five o'clock again tonight. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm going to miss my turkey. Hey, more football. It's good. <laughs> no, I want my turkey. <laughs> well, I don't think the turkey's flying away on you. <laughs> Edmonton, 72, illegal block. We have Calgary, no yards, 15-yard penalty. First down, Edmonton. All right, so it all works out in the end. And it will be at the 45-yard line. It will be first down for the Wildcats. And, result, and this will be the Edmonton. final play of the, the third quarter, barring a penalty, of course. So, of course, they get the ball pretty much exactly where it would have been on the first play, pretty but we much. had to replay that a few more times to get extra reps. <laughs> All right. There's the handoff to Heinrichs. Heinrichs fumbles the football. It's picked up. According to the, Wild, to the Colts, it is picked up by Calgary. We'll have to wait and see as they unravel the that pile. And it will be recovered by Edmonton. And, and that will be the quarter, end of the third quarter of football. And it block. is the Edmonton Wildcats 16, the Calgary Colts 13. Let's go downstairs, and here's Kevin. Thanks so much, Dave. And, of course, coming up next week, stay right here with ICU Video as we will bring you coverage, broadcast coverage of the PFC semifinal as the Edmonton Huskies play host to the Regina Thunder next Sunday at 1 p.m. right here at Clark Park. If you can't make your way down to Palatial Clark Park, make sure you stay right here with ICU Video on our YouTube channel. And, of course, check out our broadcast coverage of the entire 2017 season for both the Huskies and Wildcats. And, of course, ICU Video wants to thank the Huskies and Wildcats for their continued support and access and all of, all of the, the wonderful 
wonderful benefits they bring to ICU video and their help and support from the board, the coaches, players, and staff. And we uh, certainly want to thank them for all of their assistance in 2017. And we want to wish the Wildcats good luck heading into the offseason. And we want to wish the Huskies good luck next weekend in the PFC semifinal. Dave, back to you as we bring you the fourth quarter here on ICU video. Thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a great weekend of football here at uh, Clark Park next Sunday afternoon with the uh, Huskies playing host to the Regina Thunder. And if it's anything like the first uh, meeting between these two teams, it uh, should be a, a pretty interesting uh, competition. No question about that. And uh, the Wildcats at this time want to thank all of their sponsors, uh, dentalchoice.ca, the JC Boiler Service Limited uh, Company, the Rough Rider, Lyman Fitness, McElhaney, uh, OTR Kitchen and Drink, and uh, the good folks from WestJet as well. And of course, without their help, uh, all of this would not be possible, including our telecast or our procast here on uh, YouTube with ICU video. All right, Colton Hippie is back in at quarterback after uh, sitting on the bench for a couple of uh, couple of series and Bray Joseph back in at uh, running back and there's the handoff to Joseph Joseph loses the football and it is going to be recovered by the Calgary Colts and, and I'm not sure what's going on but all of a sudden uh, Bumbleitis has taken over with the uh, with the Wildcats. Well, yeah, we saw the touchdown off the fumble earlier in the half, and now we've got a little bit of exchange problem. Again, I don't think the I don't think Jozu ever really had the ball secure in there, and again, that's going to be a quarterback uh, running back issue that they're going to have to talk about. And you could see after the play, they were both looking at each other a little bit frustrated, knowing this game's in the balance, and Calgary's now have the ball. The Colts with the football on their own 45-yard line. Dylan Pye at quarterback, four receivers to the right side. There's the handoff to Minchel. Minchel has some room, and he takes off to the 50. Still going and taken down just over the 50-yard line on a nice Dylan shoestring Mitchell tackle by Isaiah Brown. And, and a flag Brown. did come out late on the far side of the field, so we'll see what the refs have to say about this one. Well, that's certainly more like it for Dylan Minchel. Minchel, as I mentioned, coming into this game with 109 carries and over 500 yards on the ground and four touchdowns. Well, and you can see it on this replay, the offensive line getting up field, getting bodies on bodies, and they're actually getting pushed into the defensive backfield. And it goes for not holding in the offensive backfield on the part of the Calgary Colts. And so that will bring the football back to about the 50 yard line. I think it still is. Uh, I think it's first and 10 because it was probably after the yards were gained on that it run was. play. And uh, there's the play action and taking it himself is Dylan Pye. And he will pick up a gain of Dylan about Pye eight yards or so. By number Let's see where they mark it down. Jaden Dalkey in on the tackle. It is a gain of eight. It'll be second and two. Yeah, again, Calgary going with a no huddle offense, trying to keep that momentum going. They're moving the ball. Unfortunately, the penalty brought them back, but here they go on second and short. There's the handoff, Minchel. Minchel showing uh, his great eyesight as, as he sees the hole close up, moves to the right and finds a hole and uh, Picks up another eight yards or so on the plane, enough for the first down. Well, that's patience you want to see in a quarterback. When you talk about running toward the hold, you can see he goes right behind the guys and waits. If he breaks too early, it gives the defensive guys a chance to move into the gaps he's trying to get to, but he stayed behind his blockers and then broke it late and then used his foot speed to gain the yards he needed. Minshul is lone setback straight up the middle, almost caught in the backfield, but he eluded the grasp of uh, one of the... Uh, Linebackers Ryan Young, or one of the defensive linemen, rather, uh, Ryan Young out there, and uh, Minchel is stopped though after a gain of maybe a yard, second and a long nine. Short gain on the play, they will make it second, a long nine, just inside the 44. The Colts with four receivers to this side, back in the pocket now, looking downfield, and he is hurried, but he gets the pass away to Dylan Minchel, and Minchel is Dylan going to pick up close to 15 yards on the play, 
They'll mark it at uh, just shy of the 30-yard line, enough for the first down. Well, it's interesting wow. watching the replay. A simple play, but what an athletic move to catch this ball, stop on a dime, and be able to get the yards for the first down because where he caught it, he would not have been in first down territory, but good job of using his hands to catch the ball, especially for a running back, and two, stopping his feet, getting upfield to execute and complete the first down. They put four or three receivers to the far side. Here's the sweep, and the ball is taken by number 19, Jesse Kuntz. Kuntz is uh, out of bounds, but he is going to have enough for the first down. So again, now you're seeing a little bit more of a balanced attack from Calgary, yeah. and they really put it together. They're able to run up the middle with a little bit more success. They're running out to the edge, which again, they were doing in the first half, and they're also able to put the ball into the air with some success. All that doing into the wind, which is good. And it looks like the ball is going to be moved back. Well, now we're calling for a measurement. That's what it is. Ball standing right on the uh, touch line here as they get these sticks out. Long run for the, uh, for the officials. And it is by about half the length of the football, and a first down. And I'm sure the stick crew from the far side of the field could have told you that to save them the 65 yard sprint across the field, but <laughs> they had to convince everybody else it was a first down. And so they marked the ball just shy of the 20 yard line. And again, the Calgary Colts offense on the move, trailing by three. We've got twin setbacks for Dylan Pye. They're in misdirection. Second man through is Dylan Minchel. And Minchel is ahead to the five and taken down at the four yard line. And a tackle in there made by number 11, Brady Kerr, out of Spruce Grove. Well, you can definitely see the momentum change. Uh, they've just cap they've capitalized on the turnovers. They've capitalized on the defenses, giving them a chance to get the ball back. And now they're really going back after that run game, which is interesting because they really didn't, we didn't see a lot of that in the first half. And all of a sudden we're seeing it have a tremendous amount of sex here, sex, success here in the second half. Ball on the four, first and goal. Rolling to his right, there's the pass. It is picked off at the two yard line and boy we've got to see we've got to see a replay <laughs> on this this was just an incredible that was beat. unbelievable brady kerr from uh, spruce grove going low in front of the uh, receiver and picking that one off and what a great uh, pick off for the young man brady kerr well and he reached over and picked it right off the turf and again <laughs> You talk about timing and you talk about we, the defense was getting together saying, hey, they've got to close this out. This was an unbelievable pick. Let's take a look here on the replay. Just goes down in front of the receiver and picks it off, as you said, right off the, uh, the top of the turf. So it'll be first and 10 from the two yard line. There's the handoff up the middle and it is taken by Bray Josu. Josu gets out to about the eight, nine yard line. Josu brought down on the play by Denny Sackett. Gain of about uh, That's a four yard gain, second and six. Four yards, so it'll be second and six. They mark it at the seven. Well, this is a big play for Edmonton's offense. And of course, on the other side, Calgary's defense, if they can stop them here, they can get the ball back almost in field goal position. Over center, hand off to Josu. Josu has some room on the outside. He needs to get to about the, well, up to around the uh, 19 yard line, but he's gonna be well short of that. Yeah, and so Calgary's defense once again does the job they need to get done, get the ball back in the hands of the offense, which again, that's exactly what you need to do when your offense comes out. Unfortunately for them, they put a great drive together for Calgary. Unfortunately, it came up with a turnover, but the defense responded right away, hopefully getting the ball back after this punt into the hands of the Calgary offense, which at this point seems to find ways to move the ball. Do you take a knee or do you kick it away? I think they'll kick it away and put it on their defense. I'm wrong. <laughs> Matt Zeroni decides to take a knee, and uh, so with that, it's going to be a one-point football Matt game. Zeroni gives up the safety in the end zone. Well, I've been wrong before, and I'm sure I'll be wrong again, but interesting and decision. We'll inter it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, because now a punt single, which may not be easy to come by, but again, with that wind died down a little bit, 
Again, Calgary is working into the into the wind, even if it's a little bit of a wind. Um, they're still going to have to. Uh, their defense is going to be have, have to be up to the task because now it's a one-point game, and it's uh, a lot easier for Calgary to get that point. All right, so the Colts will be uh, taking the football over in pretty good field position after this kickoff, which will be coming all the way back at the 35-yard line. We'll have a couple of receivers standing at around the 25. Dylan Minchel was one of them. And also out there now is Scott Hay on the far side. The Wildcats will be kicking off from their own 35-yard line. Well, again, a good sign that uh, Coach Darcy Park does believe in their defense and does believe the defense is going to be able to keep them out because they're giving the ball right back to Calgary and the opportunity to drive the field. Tanner Holt, end over end, down to the 30-yard line, taken by Minchel. Minchel is stopped at around the 40, 41-yard line, and a good job of uh, taking him down by number 21, Jaden Dalkey. Yeah, you don't want to get his uh, feet going because he can do a lot of damage in a hurry. You'll see here on the replay, you know, he catches it in pretty good field position near the 30, and then upfield he goes in behind his blockers. Dalkey getting down there very quickly to make the tackle. Yeah, and again, doing a great job shedding the block and, and limiting the gain. They mark it at the 43-yard line with 9.35 to go in the football game. One-point difference. The Wildcats leading. There's the handoff to Dylan Minchel, and Minchel continues to rack up the yardage here in the second half after being almost non-existent in the first half, but he's moving it and picking up close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. I think he needed to get to about the 50, just shy of the 54 yard line. They mark it right at the 53. So he'll be and about a half a yard short. One. Yeah, they're doing a good job continuing with that run game, putting the hands in the, in, putting the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And that's what you need to do. Again, not a lot on the line other than the pride and those pieces. Again, they all want to finish well. They all want to finish this season with a victory. Another long run for the Stick holders. And let's see what they've got. It's going to be really close. They're going to be short by about the nose of the football. And again, we talk about the difference in run game. In the first half, really, the Wildcats dominated the line of scrimmage, dominated the run game, and Bray Jozu did a lot of damage in that first half. And now it's kind of turning the other way, and now we've got Dylan Minshall doing all the damage in the second half, and we're seeing that balanced out, and obviously that's on the scoreboard. Calgary on the move here. If you just joined us uh, down in Calgary, Bailey Wazel is out in his final game as a Calgary Colt, injured early in the first quarter when one of his players rolled on him and uh, appeared to injure his, uh, his ankle or his shin. Taking off with the football, Dylan Pye. And Pye, in his first season with the Calgary Colts, will pick up a short gain of maybe a yard or so on the play. We'll see where they mark it. He uh, needed, to, he needed to get to, as I say, the 54-yard uh, line. And I don't, I don't think he's going to have g gained the first down there, so now they're going to be stuck with second or third and really short now, and they're going to have to make another decision. Offense is going to stay out there. Big play for the Calgary Colts. They trail by one. Ball on their own 54-yard line. Handoff, Minshew. Minshew cracks the hole and takes off with it and is finally hauled down shy of the 45-yard line. When in doubt, to go to the guy, and uh, Dylan Minshew is the guy. Yeah, and interesting, and uh, you've and heard it probably many times before. You've got second and one, and then again, third and one, and Calgary is lining up in shotgun. Often you're going to see that come under center, so at least there's the option of a quarterback sneak, but in both cases, they, they opted for a shotgun or a pistol formation, which is a shotgun formation, a little bit shorter, four yards from the center, which we've seen a little bit from Calgary today. So you're, the, time you're, the, you're the defense, you see that, uh, isn't it? pretty obvious it's going to go to Dylan Mitchell well yeah and that's what I'm thinking on defense again yeah Calgary saying you know what we know you we know you know who's getting the ball but we're going to beat you man on man in that case they had a successful run and they gained the first down yards oh when you've got a running back like Dylan Mitchell and he's done it all here in the Prairie Football Conference over the years and right now we have an injured wildcat 
And we'll try and get a number here for you. Looks like one of the uh, defensive linemen. Uh, taking a look, I'm can, not sure. It looks like it might be his shoulder, and it is number 42, uh, Rashid Robinson, number 42, Rashid Robinson, favoring his left uh, elbow. Heading off the field. First and ten. And uh, Rashid, uh, of course, this is his last game as a Wildcat as well. He and his brother Rashad. Rashad not dressed for this football game. Over center now, Dylan Pye. Motion goes left. There's that misdirection. It is taken by Landon Rose, and Rose finds some room on the left side and runs it ahead for a gain of close to six yards on the play. They like that. I, I call it a misdirection, but it's actually kind of like a, a fake toss. And yeah, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a counter, whether it's a fullback or a running back. They've ran with a few different guys, but you're getting motion from the defense going in one direction, bringing players back the other direction. There it is, straight up the middle. Dylan Minchel. And Minchel is going to have enough for the first down. Yeah, it's going to be close, that's for sure. I think they may be half a yard short, so we're going to see another short and... Uh, or third and really short that uh, Calgary's gonna have to execute if they wanna keep this drive going. They mark it square on about the uh, 37 yard line. I think they had to get between the 36 and 37. So it's going to be third and half a yard. And again, out of the shotgun. Yeah, there's Minchel with it. And Minchel is piled up at the line of scrimmage, but uh, I think his forward Motion will get him all the way up to about the 35-yard line. It will be enough for the first down. Yeah, definitely enough for a third down. That's a, or first down, and that's a, a veteran running back knowing what he needs. He needs six inches in that in that in that situation. He didn't stop his feet trying to find the hole. He just put his head down, made sure he got the first down. Coach Asarli standing him up at the line of scrimmage, but uh, not enough to prevent the first down. So it'll be first and ten. Ball on the 35-yard line, and we're down to about 6:20 to go. In this football game, handoff, Minchel. Minchel tries the right side, and uh, he will be stopped after a gain of close to six yards on the play. And what you're seeing by your uh, Calgary offense is you're actually seeing a double tight end set. Yeah. And so they're saying, hey, we're having some success running the ball. Let's bring as much weight into the offensive line as we can. Bring in your extra tight ends, and we're going to run it right down your throat. And Cal Edmonton's defense is going to have to find a solution to stop this. Now back in the pocket, looking downfield. Pass on the flats, complete to Minchel. And Minchel makes it across the 20-yard line to about the 19. And he'll pick up uh, close to about nine yards on the play and enough for the first down. So if he's not going to run the ball, then why not throw it to him? Well, they're going to find a way to get this ball in the end zone. It's likely going through the hands of number 21. You're exactly right. He's running the ball. He's catching the ball. He's doing a lot of work. And that's where Calgary is going to lean on here as we go into the last few minutes of this get ball game. He will finish the season with well over 1,000 yards on offense, both on the ground and through the air. There's the pitch out to Mitchell. Mitchell finds some room and is at the five and at the one touchdown, Dylan Mitchell. Dylan Mitchell, 19 yards. 19 yard touchdown for and Dylan Mitchell. Mitchell. And boy, I'll tell you what, touchdown. he is a tough guy to, to pull down. Well, we've seen a couple things on this drive. We've obviously seen the determination of a, of a veteran running back, but we've also seen a Calgary offense that's kept the flags from the officials in their pockets. And again, there that's kind of been killing them throughout this game. They've obviously executed without penalties and it showed here. Two point conversion attempt by Pai. He fires it into the end zone. It is good. Taken there by number 30, uh, Omari Fraser. That two -point and that Omari runs the Fraser. score up to, well, past more than one score. And well, yeah, it's 23-16, so now they're up by a full touchdown. So again, we thought the wind may play into this quarter, but it really hasn't because nope. Calgary's been able to run the ball, which is exactly what you do when you're going into the wind with a few short passes, and they've had tremendous amount of success of you, as you've seen, and now the onus is on the Edmonton offense. Can they respond with a touchdown drive of their own? 
and and we're, we're seeing a perfect example of what can happen so often when you get the running game going like that you're just wearing down the defense yeah you are in the defensive line and is getting tired but they're also playing with the 30 defense and that means three defense alignment so we've seen that for the majority of that drive with four linebackers but i think they're going to need to make that change if they want to stop the running game of calgary at this point but really the onus now turns to the offense of the edmonton wildcats Jaden Sheelan gets a low kick away right into uh, the arms of one of the waiting linemen up there. He was number 26, uh, Jack Jones, and Jones, Jones is able to recover it. And it will give the Wildcats good field position with the uh, ball on the butt of the 49-yard line. Well, nice decision. I like I like the excitement and that kind of thing. I've got the same play play in my playbook. Again, kick it at one of those big guys, see if it bounces off them. And again, they actually got a good bounce, just no one there for Calgary to pick it up. Now here comes Edmonton's offense. And it will be Colton Hippie. Motion goes to the right. Hippie being hurried. There's the screen pass, and it is into the ground, really, and intended out there for number 15, Ronnie Oling. Yeah, that, I think that may have hit the back of one of the offensive linemen, which is going to be a legal, uh, is going to be a legal receiver downfield. Four fifty-one to go here in the fourth quarter. Holding, Edmonton number sixty-two, Saskatchewan six line, second down. So interest, interesting decision by the staff to cancel the, uh, cancel the penalty and go second and 10 and really put some pressure on Edmonton to execute here versus second first and 20, uh, which if they would have taken the penalty, that's what it would have been. Ball on the 49-yard line. Hippie looking downfield. Fumbles the football and is recovered by the Colts. And if, I think we'll see on the, on the replay here that uh, Colt, uh, Hippie rather, Going back and, and ball knocked out of his hands as he tried to pass it. There it well, is. again, you can see he brought the ball up to deliver it. His first option was taken away, and as he brings the ball down, the, the, the pocket just collapses, both number 94 and 95 in there. Ball comes loose, and then we got two or three Calgary guys all jumping on the ball. This is, I hate to say it, but a microcosm of this entire season for the, Cal for the Edmonton Wildcats. What uh, what can go wrong, will, or what will go wrong, does go wrong. There's a handoff to Dylan Minchel again, and Minchel plows forward. That's Landon Rose. The ball I think that was Landon Rose, oh, Landon not Minchel. So they're using 22. both their backs, and again, the nice thing about having two backs that can carry the load is you're going to have fresher legs. And again, when do you want to have a strong run game? When you have three minutes and 57 seconds left on the clock, you've got a lead, and you want that clock to tick away as fast as possible. So Rose stays out there. Dylan Pye has settled down since that first quarter when he had to come in and replace in uh, place of uh, Bailey Wasdell and calling a great football game. There's the handoff again to Landon Rose. He tries the Landon other Rose side. The ball again and he uh, needed about five yards for the first down. We'll see where they mark it. The they say he got it. So a gain of about well, six. And that will move the football down to about the 32. Yeah, and the offense continues to burn time off the clock. Probably the biggest thing Edmonton is watching right now is how much time is ticking off that clock as this drive continues with this r strong run game of the Calgary Colts in the second half. They go with a pair of setbacks out there, including uh, number four, Tanaka. And there's the handoff, second man through. Football comes loose. They scramble for it. And no call from the officials yet. I think number 54 of Calgary came up with that ball. Sarah and, uh, again, really, uh, really saving their offense. Again, we've seen that ball hit the ground quite a few times here, and this time it was in contact. Good job of Edmonton ripping the ball out. Unfortunately for them, their defense didn't jump on it, and Calgary's offense has a chance to keep this drive alive and, more importantly, burn more time off the clock. Well, no doubt the, uh, the temperature and the wind has a, a great deal to do with the ability of the team to hold on to the football because we've seen, a, as you say, the football hit the ground a lot. We have, yes, and they're going to have to stop doing that if they want to, either team wants to finish out this game. Dylan Pye, pass in the middle. It is complete to Tanaka. And Tanaka takes it down Dylan over the five-yard line. Tanaka Butano. 
Tanaka. And it's not often you get big men like that downfield, but what a great job of securing the catch, settling down in the zone spot, which is exactly what you want to do as a receiver. And running back did a good job of maintaining his feet and getting inside the five. Tanaka Mutano with the big gain brings it down to about the four yard line. Now Pai rolling out, out of the pocket, looks into the end zone, fires complete, touchdown! Marlon Zamora with that reception and really uh, gets out in front of the defender and, and easily picks it off. Yeah, well, we're seeing the tale of two halves play out here. You could see even looking back to the energy the Cats had coming out of the first half, although they left some points on the field, which Coach alluded to in their interview at halftime, there was a lot of emotion. If you look down at the Wildcat bench now, the emotion is gone. And they're probably mailing this one in, unfortunately. And you can see the emotion on the other side of the field is exactly the opposite than when they came out the half. And that's the big piece about grabbing momentum. And Calgary did a great job. It started with a young quarterback coming out in the first series, marching the field to get a touchdown. And then they've got a couple breaks. They got back into it, made it close. And now they've taken a substantial lead here with only a couple minutes left. Calgary, number 64, five-yard penalty. They'll be kicking, or they'll be trying this one over again. It was offside on the uh, Calgary Colts. You know, talking to the, to the coaching staff there, I mean, obviously last year they finished at six and three. They, had, they got into the playoffs. They made it all the way to the PFC final. Uh, this year they're going to end the season at uh, three and five. And uh, according to the coaching staff, uh, with the, all the turmoil that they faced this season, uh, they're perfectly good with that. Well, based on what's going on, yeah, you want to you want to celebrate the successes you have. You want to celebrate, obviously, f finishing strong. But again, they've got some work to do. Both sides of both both teams here today playing have got quite a bit of work to do. They want to get back into competing for the conference championship. I talked to Coach Darcy Park about next year and, and what he needs, what he's looking forward to, and he says, really, the thing that they need for next season is a couple of playmakers. It's, it's something that they've lacked the last two seasons anyway, that, that big playmaker, the guy who can make a difference in a football game for you. Yeah, and every team needs some of those, and to be honest with you, I think they've had one or two of those. Maybe adding a couple to the mix next year is going to help, and I think over the course of the year, some of the things that Edmonton's going to want to want to clean up a little bit is taking care of some of the details throughout the game mm -hmm. i mean we've seen a lot of penalties we've seen penalties at really inopportune times and that's really hurt the wildcats in a number of their games and even today they had a, a pretty good first half really didn't execute on offense like they should and again calgary hung around and hung around and hung around scored a touchdown got a break their defense scored for them and now edmonton's looking up at a pretty big deficit to to come back in the last two minutes and 19 seconds. You know, all things being equal with the almost wholesale change in the coaching staff, uh, the Wildcats uh, facing a lot of uh, a lot of problems going into this uh, season. And uh, to be honest with you, they they did not do all that bad considering what uh, what they had to go through as well. Yeah, and you know the coaching staff are going to be able to sit down this off season look at what's gone on this year, evaluate who they have, evaluate all that talent. And I, I don't think either of these teams are gonna make massive changes. Yeah, you always wanna add new pieces to your team. You wanna add some new players that are gonna bring, bring something special to the team. And that's what both teams need to do if they wanna climb to the top of this conference, which is very competitive. Wildcats, first down, ball on their own 37 yard line. Hippie, Hippie now out of the uh, pocket, gets the ball downfield. And it is over the head of the intended receiver, uh, number 88, Zach Burgess. But a couple of uh, flags. I think we're going to have a, a holding call against the Wildcats. Yeah, I think you're right. And again, just offensive linemen. Sometimes it's if you don't move your feet, and you can watch on the replay here where it comes in. You know, if you're not moving your feet, and I always tell my guys, you got to keep your feet moving. As soon as your feet stop, as soon as your feet stop, you tend to hold on to somebody. And usually if the refs are standing right there, they're going to catch on it. And Minchel takes a, a rather uh, hippie takes a bit of a hit too, just as he got rid of the football. And he bounces back and it'll be second and 10. Ball on the 37 yard line, four receivers to the far side, into the middle, pass complete at the 40. And it is taken there by number 15, Ronnie Oling. He'll pick up maybe three yards on the play. It'll be third and a bunch. We'll call it third and seven. Third down and a long six. 
Mark it at the 41 yard line, and as a result, Matt Zeroni will be kicking this one away. We think anything could happen we at think this stage I'm of the not, football game. If, if I were coaching right now, I think I'd be calling some kind of fake. All right, there's a high snap and a good spiraling kick, bouncing down at the 25 yard line, right into the hands of Dylan Minshall. Minshall gets it out of the grasp of one tackler and finally taken down at about the 31 yard line. We've got a couple of uh, flags on the play. Well, this season wouldn't be complete if we didn't finish with the number of flags in the last two minutes. It has been one of those years. Well, we just don't want the season to end for these two teams, right? We want to stretch it out a little bit, get a few more reps in for these guys. But, you know, in fairness, and, and Arnie Enger made a good point at halftime. We'll, we'll watch this uh, run back of the punt one more time here. Notice how it goes right into the arms of Minshall. There's a no yards penalty right there. But uh, as Arnie Enger mentioned, he wouldn't want to be an official these days because of the changes in the rules and, and, and everything. There, there, there's a lot of gray areas on a lot of these calls. There always is. And of course, is when you have two coaches on both sidelines, they don't see the gray areas. They see it as their area. And they always want that gray area call to be in there. So I don't even, even with that, without any changes happening, I'm not sure I would want to be an official. Dylan Pye continues at quarterback. Done a great job in relief of Bailey Wasdell. There's the handoff. And uh, <laughs> love it. I love it. Love it. Number number 58, number Tyler Winchester, Tyler Winchester. All of uh, six foot one and about 310 pounds of him carrying the football. Boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Well, you know, it, the game is, is pretty much over. A minute 25 to go. Well, a little Why tight end counter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. High, handoff, up the middle. Landon Rose with it. Rose will get it across the 30, which is what he needed to do to get the first down. I think that pretty much seals the deal here with now getting down close to one minute. Getting another first down, this run game is just taking its toll on the Edmonton defense here in the second half. Up by 14, and on the move once again with a minute four to go. Calgary Colts finishing the season off on a winning note. There's the handoff, and again, taken by one of the uh, big guys, and that is number 54, and number 54 uh, Serge Archambault. And Archambault ball, by, uh, by trade is an offensive lineman. And he's brought down <laughs> by number 92. Everybody's, everybody's breaking new ground today, see? <laughs> everybody's vying for hey, that he running. Showed, he showed some pretty good speed to the hole. Yeah, of course, everybody wants to vie for that running back spot next year. <laughs> Four receivers on this side, handoff. In the middle, and again, that is uh, this time number 32, Brad Hillier. Brad Hillier. And Hillier will pick up a couple of yards as we move down to the final 32.9 seconds Akilah of the football game. Well, this is the time of the game where those uh, guys who will be graduating from their respective programs are gonna feel some of that emotion, realizing, you know what, as hard as it's been on both sides of the ball. And you talk about guys like Colton Hippie just playing that last game of football. You know, those emotions are gonna come in and they don't want it to end. They really don't. And so they're probably at this point paying those officials to throw the flags because it may be the end of their football careers as a player. Um, and of course, we always want and hope that those guys who finally graduate from playing will graduate into something else where they can pour back into the, foot, the game of football and pour into the young lives of the young players right now. I will talk a little bit more of that uh, in the post game, but uh, certainly the Calgary Colts uh, have a little extra motivation uh, following that injury to Bailey Wasdell. And uh, I think that may have factored into this one as well. There's a short kick. It'll bounce back toward the uh, goal line and it'll be picked up there by the Wildcats and taken out of bounds at the 10 yard line isaiah brown out of bounds and we'll see where they mark it at about the 11 so the 
Wildcats with 20 seconds to go. Have the ball in pretty good field position. Well, great heads up play by Edmonton, knowing that ball hit one of the Calgary guys. There's nothing to lose here. Get the football and off to the race as you go. There's also a flag which may add to this as well. Likely via no yards call. No yards, kicking team, Calgary. Number 82, their penalty is declined. First down. Penalty is declined, and that will leave the football at the 11 yard line. And it'll be first and 10. Edmonton. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Well, if you're Edmonton, you got to go to the end zone right here. You got about four plays left, one which will be a short kick if they can convert this, but they need to get this in the end zone first. Never say die for the Edmonton Wildcats. Bray Joseph, lone setback, four receivers to the far side. Joseph moves that way. There's the pass into the end zone, incomplete. And intended out there for Tanner Holt. He was being covered closely by Thomas Getz. And that'll bring up a second and 10. Well, a little slant route right at the goal line. Again, pass a little bit behind him if the receiver would have slowed down. Again, Colton probably saw the guy on the other side, so trying to keep it away from him. So, again, they've got to be on the same page, slow down, and then secure that catch on the goal line. All right, same setup. Three receivers to the far side. Bray Josu at halfback. Into the end zone now. There's the pass. Just short of the end zone at about the five yard line again, intended for Tanner Holt, and he couldn't hold on to it. So the offense will stay out there for the final 11.3 seconds, and we'll see whether Colton Hippie can uh, put a seven pointer in to end off his career. Yeah, and that's what you want to do with your veteran quarterback let him have his last chance. And uh, either way, he's going to walk off the field with his head high of the success he's had over the years. Hippie on the snap now, looks into the end zone, fires it in behind the intended receiver, number and 88, uh, Zach Burgess. And that will be, and be pretty much it for the Edmonton Burgess. Wildcats. They turn it over on, on downs down. with uh, seven seconds to go. And uh, you, you gotta feel a little bad for uh, Colton Hippie and uh, the rest of the graduating players, Bray Josu and uh, the rest of them, Rasheed Robinson. Uh, for going out in a way that they have, but uh, they have to ha have their heads held high. It's it's been a great football career for all of them. Yeah, and you never wanna you never wanna end on a game like this. No. But you know what? The reality is, is you know one of the two teams and is gonna have to walk away with a win, and one's gonna come away with a loss. And those veterans are gonna, you know, look back on their careers as cats and colts, and you know they're gonna feel good about the years they spent and the great times and the memories they've made and just the, uh, the, you know, the relationships they've built with coaching staffs and players and teammates. So they run the clock down and that is the end of the football game with the Calgary Colts heading home with a 30 to 16 Thanks victory for over the Edmonton Wildcats season, and uh, the end of a season for both these Drum football teams. Uh, the Colts will finish, or the uh, Colts will finish with a three and five record and the Wildcats will wrap it up with a record of one and seven. Uh, Coach Darcy Park uh, will uh, take a look at this season, evaluate what needs to be done, what they need to get for the following season. And as he mentioned to me, uh, playmakers, something that they need badly to uh, make a difference with this football team. But uh, you know, it's, it's the third year of a five-year cycle for, for Darcy Park and his coaching staff. And uh, I think uh, they're on their way. They're, there's, a, there's an improvement. There's an improvement every year for this team. Yeah, and I think we did see an improvement this year. It may not have showed up in the win column more than just that single win, but again, I think there is some improvements, and I think looking ahead, the uh, the, the Wildcats are gonna gonna say, hey, we're graduating five players, and again, they're, they've been leaders. They've been uh, mainstays in this organization, but there's new guys that are ready to step up, and I think we've seen some talent come in the doors that they're gonna have to take advantage of next year and building towards next year and i always talk to my players at the end of the year and i'm sure darcy will have a very similar message to these guys that uh, you know what the next six to eight months is going to be critical as to where this organization goes i mean the coaches are going to work the front office is going to work on both these organizations both down in calgary and here in edmonton they need to get the players in the door but the guys who are here need to get work done 
And again, as an athlete, as a, as a competitor, you need to spend the time. They're going to have to spend the time in the gym. They're going to have to spend the time refining the smaller skills um, that maybe get overlooked sometimes. And again, when you want to take a team from, if you want to move a team forward, wherever you are, if you want to move forward, you got to take care of those little details. Let's go downstairs, and uh, Kevin Donnan has a special guest with him. Well, thanks so much, Dave. I am here with Dylan Pye, and the, the rookie comes in off the bench. You never want to come into a game uh, in, due to an injury, but uh, you guys must have played this one for Bailey. Yes, we sure did. He was a great uh, leader for the whole season, and everyone did their part today, so which was amazing. Now, how were you able to get so, I mean, in the second quarter, I mean, your, your head coach said that, you know, that first series, your eyes were the size of dinner plates, but then things really slowed down for you, didn't they? Yeah, I sure did. Uh, I just started taking my time, started doing my drops, and everyone was open. And, and I mean, that's got to help you, too. I mean, let's talk about your guys up front. The offensive line did a magnificent job for you in the second half. Yeah, they did it very well. They, shout out to every one of them. They did a great job. And, and what did this game mean in terms of, uh, of your organization going into the offseason? What are you going to work on? Uh, what do the Colts have to work on to get uh, back into the playoff race in 2018? Um, nothing. We just got to keep working. Everyone has to work in the offseason 110%, and just everyone comes back 10 times better. Well, well, congratulations on closing out 2017 with a victory. Way to go, Dylan Pye. And that is the rookie who came in off the off the bench and, and got the Colts a victory here at Clark Park. Let's send things back upstairs to Dave and Rob. Guys? Well, Rob, uh, I think uh, Dylan said it right off the top. Uh, they were playing this game for Bailey Wasdell, no question about it. They were, and you know, we want to wish all those graduating players well. And again, I love seeing the young quarterback. He's excited. He's got himself a win, you know, came in and executed. And you know what? He knew those guys around him really support him. We saw that in the second half. Everybody else, hey, we got a young quarterback. We got to help him out. And they got it done as a team. But you know, uh, I, 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 if I look back on that first quarter uh, after Bailey got, uh, got injured, uh, it took a couple of series, but then it, it kind of clicked in for the rest of the uh, the Calgary Colts that, hey, this is it. This is the end of, of, of a, a young man's career, a great career in the in Prairie Football Conference. Let's go out and let's finish this game for, for the big guy. Yeah, and you know, you hate to see that type of circumstance play out in a game like this, but what an opportunity for the young quarterback to get this oh, out yeah. of the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to come out of here with a lot more confidence, and he's going to be that much more of the organization's plans in the future. I think uh, probably a little bit more than he may have originally thought. I mean, he was the third string quarterback coming into this football game. Uh, their second stringer was was injured uh, earlier on in the season. So uh, uh, now all of a sudden his uh, his stock rises. Well, it definitely does. And that's what you need to do as a young guy. You need to take advantage of any opportunity and you hate to see it at, you know, because of an injury, but that's a reality with this game. And he did a great job coming in with the support of the guys around him, just executing in the second half. Second half was all the difference for the Calgary Colts when you take a look at some of the numbers, but uh, we'll do that. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's go downstairs instead. And uh, once again, here is Kevin. Thanks so much, Dave. I'm down here with Colts head coach, Tim Kearse and, uh, Let's talk about that rookie quarterback coming off the bench. Uh, as we talked with Dylan, uh, things really slowed down for him in the second in the second half, didn't they? Yeah, he did. His, his eyes were as big as you know, <laughs> as big as silver dollars in the first half. There, in the second half, he settled right in, and uh, the kid shocked us all. You know, really played well. Now, and and talk about uh, the offensive line. Just g give us a sense of, of what uh, Dylan Minchel was able to do for you in the second half, and especially that offensive line. What a well, performance. They did an awesome job in, in creating some, some lanes for Dylan, and Dylan, uh, he's been an awesome teammate this week in letting some guys that are fifth-year guys have an opportunity to play. Now, what does this mean for the Colts? It, it's been a struggle. Uh, the resignation of, of, of Matt Blocker, there was the, the, the midseason four-game losing streak. But uh, d give us a sense of how important this is for the Colts to finish out 2017 with a victory and then get this thing back to where you expect to be in 2018. Well, I, I think right now we have a very young team. A uh, win for these young guys today proves to them that they can stick together, be down at halftime stick together and rally with each other and stay together and this is what they did in the second half well best of luck going into 2018 and congratulations on the victory this afternoon and happy thanksgiving to uh, everyone within the colts organization and safe travels home thank you and it's happy thanksgiving to everybody up here in edmonton Appreciate absolutely it. thank you very much that is head coach tim kears the victorious head coach of the calgary colts for some final thoughts let's go upstairs to dave and rob Herod. guys well we know what the future of the uh 
of the Calgary Colts looks like, and it's certainly going to be a bright future under a new head coach. Uh, as for Darcy Park and his uh, Edmonton Wildcats, uh, a change in coaching staff, almost a wholesale change in coaching staff. Uh, I talked to Darcy about it. He's happy with the way things have developed, and with a full season under their belts, uh, next year's got to be got to be much better. Well, that's what they expect, and they need to work towards that. You mean the work is not done? There's work to do there for sure, and I think it starts with getting uh, the coaching staff in place. So they're going to need to secure the guys for next year, know who's coming back so the players can play in the same system. They don't have to learn something new. They don't have to change everything they're doing. Um, and, and again, hopefully that brings more success. I mean, Darcy's going to have to get into the high schools, as all the junior coaches are. They're constantly getting into those high schools, and it's, it's not their full-time job. <laughs> you know, they're, they're putting a lot of time in. But to have success in this league, you've got to get in the high school. You've got to get the players in your door. There's no question about that. They're going to have a very busy offseason. We're going to have a pretty busy offseason, too. And, and, in fact, our season still goes. Next week, we'll be taking into the playoffs uh, right here at Clark Park with the Edmonton Huskies uh, taking on the Regina Thunder in the PFC semifinal. And until then, on behalf of everyone here at ICU Video, let's send it back down to uh, Kevin. Well, thanks, Dave. And we want to thank our viewers who have joined us here on ICU Video and throughout our broadcast of the 2017 Prairie Football Conference season. On behalf of executive producer Rob Zitla, we want to thank our entire broadcast crew, the hardest working crew in cyberspace, for joining us this afternoon. And in this 2017 regular season finale between the Calgary Colts and the Edmonton Wildcats, we want to thank our technical advisor and camera, Dave Foley, our director, Connor. O'Donovan, our switcher Alex Testowich, our cameraman Terry Farina and fearless Matt Mosowich, our broadcast team of course Dave Rozak and Rob Herod. The Wildcats and, and Colts close out 2017 with an eye on next season and playoff runs for both teams. But meanwhile, as for the PFC, next week, keep your eyes right here on ICU Video as we will have the PFC semifinal between the, the host Edmonton Huskies and the Regina Thunder. 1 o'clock, October 15th Sunday right here at Clark Park. Want to thank you again for joining us on ICU Video this afternoon and our regular season finale between the Colts and Wildcats. The final score, the Calgary Colts 30, the Edmonton Wildcats 16. Have a happy Thanksgiving and a pleasant evening. I'm Kevin Donnan for ICU Video. Have a pleasant afternoon from Clark Park in Edmonton. Thank you.